now. Ring, ring, ring! Hello, please, and welcome back to Cross Magical Rick and Morty Game. Also, this is music. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a very interesting Monday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. We have lots to talk about uh, across all different lands as today, not maybe, maybe not today, but this week. This week is the week of reckoning. Anyways, I want to play a very fun game right now. And what I'll say is, is I'm going to make a pretty aggressive statement. I'll make a pretty fucking aggressive statement. And then if it comes true, I'll tell you how I got it. And I won't tell you before then. And no, it has nothing to do with fucking moon cycles or anything like that. Anyways, the statement is, the statement is, this week there is going to be significant price action. And on the 24th, you can expect something absolutely fucking massive. I'll tell you how I got that a little bit later. Anyways, um, <laughs> should be a fun week indeed. Perhaps even a little bit of activity going on today as well as Bitcoin does test the bottom side of the perpetual range. Anyways, with that said, I would like to wish you the best, best in the haps the happiest because why the hell not it's free to do and it could only help i think at least i hope and also i would humbly ask that you do like and subscribe as well it actually does quite literally help out the channel and now that i've actually consulted with some uh youtube experts they say i'm a fucking moron for not doing that in the past so whatever man anyways get on with it over here on the crown sheet application which we found at app.crownsheet.net and what do we see? We see no chart. The chart's gone, man. The price action is so crazy. It's it's completely off the charts right now. Anyways, uh, fear and greed index stuck at a 23. So we are in the fearful zone, as you would expect when Bitcoin is around the bottom side of the range after playing out more or less a sideways month. I mean, so let me just make sure that my microphone's working. It is working. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Bitcoin dominance still at 45%, of which we do expect that whether Bitcoin goes up or down above the range, that would be above 42,000 bucks or below about 31,000 bucks to the downside, we very will likely see this uh, absolutely fucking explode. And I still do think that. Uh, even into the, like, the shallow 50s is definitely possible at the culmination of whatever trending move this one ends up on. Looking a little bit more to the downside right now, to be fair. Anyways, open interest is still stuck at about 6 million, or sorry, six not, not 6 million, but 6 billion right there, which is kind of throwing me for a bit of a loop as I do want to see open interest essentially shoot up to the tune of at least like a billion alongside Bryce action, breaking that same range that I just spoke about. So I would like to see that. That would make me feel a lot more confident in like a, you know, sustained trending move. And uh, for right now, I do still think that there's actually two relevant scenarios to be going over. One of them is heavily bearish. One of them is... Uh, <laughs> one of them is maybe less so but also still not the most not the most uh encouraging to the boo laws out there at least for the short term at least for the short term and this can obviously change coming into the quarterly close so we have a lot of like very important things coming up uh at the end of both this week and then i think around middle of next week we do have the quarterly and by yearly close and also monthly close as well and man by monthly close by that extension and then we also have uh major futures and uh and options expiration coming at the at, at the end of this weekend or sorry not the end of this weekend but the end of this week at the 25th anyways top 10 best coins top 10 worst coins there's nothing on the best coins list right there waves terra and all the other ones are <laughs> wait no even terra is a uh, stable coin it looks like so, yeah all of them except for waves actually losing it in the last 24 hours and on the other side getting smacked with the red dildo of death stacks internet computer chilies horizon nem cutum nexo clayton phantom all things considered i mean it's only a 10 percent loss you know not anything too crazy especially for cryptocurrency land but yeah still a 10 percent loss which absolutely does uh relatively suck anyways going over here into the mark data tab what what do we see we do see that the funny rate is doing something that you would expect if bitcoin is going to potentially actually break to the downside of the range here we do see the funny rate is actually starting to print a bit slightly positive so last week uh we were seeing consistent negative rates which was actually keeping the hopes alive uh especially for like short-term medium and medium-term bounces for the bitcoin bull loss obviously we did get to about almost 41 and a half thousand bucks but thus far it has been a rejection and if we were to kind of go back in history now that is that could very well be the bull trap that i was looking for to happen a little bit higher in like the 44 to 45 thousand dollar range maybe even the deeper 40 thousand bucks territory but for right now uh when bitcoin is testing the bottom side of the range do you have to prepare for potential potential continuations of course anyways uh fear and greed indexes all kinds of sloppy going on right here and then more importantly bitcoin dominance you can say very very easily on the line chart that we are in an uptrend right there we have three reversal and well in this case you would expect the bitcoin dominance would continue to go up on continuation of a trending move or just any trending move at all realistically and again the range is as it has been for the last month essentially between about 42,000 bucks the upside versus about uh, 31,000 bucks the downside a nice thick range but ultimately 
still yet to be resolved and i do express uh i do express general reservations with this right now anyways we're going to go to, we're going to go into the price action charts right now uh, to start it off i want to start it off um i was uh, i was thinking of maybe start off with bitcoin maybe start off with uh, traditional markets but we can start off with bitcoin right here i'm putting it on the five day and i just want to kind of speak about the five day chart in general for a second the i do believe that the five day chart is one of the more powerful charts uh if you are looking at spot price action it kind of you know equates for the weekend data in a you know weird way it just seems to get price action rather well if you do look at it right here from a moving average perspective from a trend perspective and from a uh, momentum also perspective it seems to have some very very good efficacy with these signals so i wanted to point this out right here and i think it's rather obvious at least for the uh, short and medium term as this stands that the way that you'd read this if you are looking at this as a wyckoff distribution top which i do believe that it strongly is i think that there's very little question about that that if you're looking at this price action right here this would be redistribution by definition as it is right now the only way the only fucking way possible here that i actually get back back onto training bullish to the upside uh actually now can be moved down quite a fair bit before it's about fifty thousand bucks i want to see bitcoin close you know daily or weekly above there now we can use this what would have been your, essentially your <laughs> your bull trap as a you know as a reversal point above 45 000, uh sorry not 45 but 40 41 000 bucks we'll call it essentially where last week's rejection was so that does become very very significant going onwards and forwards from here that is the best case for bula still and the best case for bula is just kind of wrap it up from yesterday's long-term analysis video of which i would strongly strongly suggest uh watching that video if you want the more long-term analysis obviously I mean, it's in the long-term analysis playlist but uh you know i, I really want to focus that video on like the very very long term rather than these streams, which are, you know, more or less short and medium term, you know, for the week, essentially, uh, you know, check that video out. I actually, uh, that was, you know, one of the few videos in, you know, in a long time now that I've like really put a lot of effort into, uh, which sounds absolutely fucking terrible, but for the long term specifically, which I know that a lot of people are more or less interested in if you are, you know, a long term investor for, for us traders out there we really don't care to be honest with you and looking at this right here uh bitcoin does very very likely look like it wants to test down somewhere around the bottom side of the 89 expansion average as you can see that we have accumulated several weeks within this region again this is a five day one two three and perhaps even four around here this would be your bottom side liquid zone again best case for bull laws is essentially we see perhaps another test down around here that's completely fine but we do not want to see any breakages below there and realistically it looks something like this if the bull laws are going to pull through something like this well, uh, with the red sort of uh, ellipses kind of getting a general accumulation phase over the course of three to four months. Now, does that look like the most likely thing to happen right now? No, it does not. But that is what would essentially kind of revert, um, you know, the short term into uh, into more hopium, essentially. So if Bitcoin, you know, while Bitcoin very likely does test the downside here, if it does not break and let's say we close the five day dildo, which doesn't close anytime soon, it closes about four days. So on Thursday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, um, you know, if it closed back above, let's call it 35 or 36,000 bucks, especially, then I would say that that definitely keeps hopes alive for the bull laws uh, coming into the month of July. And then we could, could see that, you know, transpire over time. And the more time that Bitcoin spends going sideways here, I would say the better for bull laws. But right now, this week really would be it for the bearers, in my opinion. If you are, if you do want to be su uh, super bearish, we've kind of seen what you would expect thus far. Remember last week, we did say, hey, look, uh, sorry, uh, about two weeks ago, we did say, hey, look, things look bearish right now. But first things first, you know, whether you're the biggest bear or the biggest bull very likely we are going to see a bounce up we did get that bounce up that was that 41,500 ish tick that we saw last week now would be that continuation after the essential bull trap which admittedly happened a lot lower than what I was uh, kind of aiming for. I was aiming for like the mid 40s. Instead, we get 41,500. So what does that essentially imply? Well, if we do break to the downside, Bitcoin's certainly a lot more weaker than uh, than, what, than what I first gave it kind of credit for. But for right now, you know, things are looking pretty nasty right here. And it should be identified that we do have a pretty nasty cross between the 10 simple and the 21 exponential between average right here on that rejection. This would be a good example of a good cross. And if this one is going to play out, it, it will very likely play out this week or maybe into like early next week, something like that. And uh, and we can make targets for this, obviously, but we have seen this cross many times before where Bitcoin's based off the 89 expansion average, getting this cross right here, and then essentially continuation down uh, to <laughs> some more nasty levels over time. In fact, if we put this on, uh, we can just, yeah, we can just leave it right there. We don't need all of these, but um, again, I'm focusing on these two guys right here, based off of this one right here. So this one is not necessarily the same. Bitcoin was obviously basing a lot lower after the coronavirus dump. It's a lot similar to this right here, where we did base off the cyan 89 expansion average, crossing, or sorry, uh, bouncing into the cross, rejection, based down on the 200, fail, uh, 
failure on the next bounce and then base even lower at the 377 ultimately speaking same thing over here actually cyan 89 exponential average does bounce price action we bounce up into the 10 simple and 21 exponential average cross bull bull trap rejection down 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 we go eventually finding our lows at the 377 actually and then going all the way back on over here too to uh, 2014 2015 same thing bounce uh, bounce off the cyan 89 uh, goes in the cross bull trap rejection down we go below even the 200 and we didn't even have enough uh, history to populate a 377 at that point but you can imagine it'd be somewhere around there for reference the 200 is currently at around uh, 20,000 uh, about 20,500 and the 377 is about 14,000 bucks I am not necessarily calling a move down there to be 100% direct I do still think that blue laws have a chance here but it is right now the the, the balls in the barrels court so make no mistake about it you know right now is not necessarily the time for hopium it's the time if you if you do want to be bullish to watch you don't necessarily want to be investing right here you want to see some sort of indication of still accumulation going on at the low thirty thousand dollar territory again anywhere between about thirty one thousand and uh, thirty two thousand bucks is fair game this week and if we do see you know some activity down around there any sort of uh, you know you know any sort of cues of accumulation that would be what you want to see if you are bullish but for right now things do look pretty dire in the short term time frame uh, in the short term time frame so let me just put throw back on all of these major movement evidence over here and actually before we do that I do want to talk about traditional markets <laughs> hey what's up Bitcoin Delphine thank you I appreciate that and Sam has some uh, has some forks over there fuck yeah man we'll get to that I'm going to turn off the alerts for the second uh, bean and let's go over and actually check out uh, traditional marks first and foremost okay so we got spy futures over here of which we did see a pretty nasty close a bearish engulfing dildo right here on last week's uh, well weekly closure that is so I would be saying some somewhat similar for uh, for uh, for traditional marks right here as well you know while we might open up on a bounce when US markets open up a little bit later today at uh, I believe 9 30 a.m. Eastern time I'd be looking for perhaps you know maybe back up to like 4150 maybe even as much as 4180 somewhere around the 10 simple but ultimately I do think that we will be making our way down at the very least somewhere around the 21 on uh perhaps perhaps this week maybe maybe next week something like that and let's take a look at the monthly and how it's kind of situated right now as well this would be a little bit more concerning yes but to be fair we do have about nine days left in the trading month to go yeah sorry not nine days we'd actually have uh one two three four five six seven eight yeah about eight eight days left in the trading month to go tell the monthly closure and I, I think it's maybe a little bit premature to say anything about this uh thus far there is an obvious trade here though if we do take out last month's low this thing will come down and it will come down very very hard and seeing that as there are extremely strong correlations between pretty much everything in this land and what u.s marks are doing that's not going to bode too well for for the world i would imagine but for right now it's a little bit too you know it's a little bit further away for uh for us to be too concerned about but as you can see you know uh, perhaps this week we might even come down and even take out that last month lows so at least test somewhere around there right around about 40 50 40 60 ish region and well if the reaction is anemic then perhaps we actually are looking at a greater pullback long term Term. I know that there are several people, um, you know, very, very big names like Michael Burry, who called the 2008 crash, who say that, uh, who suggest that this is, or we're looking at perhaps the next major, massive, even bigger bubble crash uh, going on relatively soon. Um, you know, I think that there could be merit to that, but that is not my game. Again, I'm just more or less a technical trader. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple person. Um, but uh but you know that's obviously like more macro uh, economic um uh sort of analysis which i don't really see uh as like a viable edge honestly long term to be honest with you uh it's it's very notorious that most economists are actually uh completely off on price action or, or you know it's very very difficult there's just so much to go into it i don't think any one person understands the true breadth of the economy so it's very very difficult of course um, but you know he uh, you know from a technical standpoint he does have a lot of things on his you know on his edge right here too I mean we do see that weekly RSI is giving us hidden or sorry not not hidden but regular bearish divergence right here we do have higher highs right here between this high and this high and this is uh, lower highs on RSI and we're actually about to get kicked out of the bullish control zone as well perhaps even this week so that would be rather nasty as well Again, I'd still get a chance to at least bounce similar to Bitcoin around the 21 here and maybe, you know, just gets picked up and uh, and we get to go on onwards and forwards to the moon. Kick that can down the road a little bit further. I like that. But um, <laughs> but looking at Dixie over here, too, we are at kind of the precipice of like a major pivot as well. So we did say a move to the to the 55 on the weekly was likely last week. We did get that move to 92 and a half. Would we would I extend this move a little bit more? I do think we're going to get an official test of the 55 this week, which is just above 92 and a half. Actually, looking at the daily 
Daily. I do think that we could test a little bit higher than that, somewhere around the 377, but I would be looking for pullbacks around that region. The question is, will that be a reversal or will that just be a pullback before reaccumulation and then continuation later on? I think that right now it's really important to be looking at the higher term time frames here of which we have a bi yearly closing and this is Dixie so we do have you know 40 years of history on the charts going all the way back to 85 by the way and I do think that this would be a little bit um a little bit unlikely to end up on the bullish side to be fair uh based off the uh, b uh based off the bi yearly right here i mean we do see uh bi yearly tsi wants to kind of turn down a little bit it will officially turn down with any sort of a closure below 90 35 which we're actually nowhere near right now to be fair and uh in bi yearly uh rsi is really not giving us all that much uh yeah it's actually not giving us anything right there it's it's, it's completely neutral if anything um so i would say that this obviously does lean a little more on the downside as we do see trend we do see high low lower high and you know obviously already closing on low low does give me the bias long term that this very likely does break to the downside but depending on this monthly closure and also six month closure uh, I could change my views on that especially if we do see the monthly close anywhere above uh, this last sort of swing high right here at 93 and guess where no, I guess where 93 also lines up with that would be around the 377 on the daily as well which I do think we will very likely test the question is how does price action respond around there if if there is no rejection and um, and and price action essentially you know grinds that area up and we do see reaccumulation and then another try to the upside and even just test around the prior high i'd say that that is not going to come to fruition and we very likely do see this uh well we very likely do see this one explode and everything else kind of fall apart on, you know against it it doesn't necessarily work exactly like that but i do think that there is a good case for at the very least a pullback from that region we do see daily bbwp a volatility based indicator getting really really red right here you know typically speaking you're not going to see it get too red for too long before you do see a bit of mean reversion and in this case that would that would imply that at the very least we pull back get a consolidation and if that you know if that does lead to reversal that'd be more or less good for traditional markets and you know by extension bitcoin but uh but it, but as of the bright you know as of this moment i do think that it's going to make everyone kind of hold their breath for the time being and uh looking at the weekly and looking at a lot of other things it is kind of hard to ignore right here um that we do see you know momentum's obviously twisting up right there i, I mean that you know that moves more or less play but the weekly tsi turning up is very very concerning i would say that that one actually has been very good at getting these major moves here and it's actually just freshly turning up right now after a after a quick hike uh, give and go right there which is typically a sign of confidence within the market so i do think that um you know that would also be <laughs> definitely on the bear side for bitcoin as well and if we go over here to bitcoin uh, on the shorter term time frames so let's let's start to chart out the very low term time frames here let's go down to a four hour and see what we got going on let's see is my chart still working over here or do we want to work off of uh, cme well this chart is more or less fine right here and what do we have okay we have we have a short term we we have a range within a range within a range okay the greater range obviously about forty one thousand bucks or forty one five hundred to the upside versus about uh, thirty three thousand uh yeah about thirty three to the downside as it is right now um i wouldn't necessarily call new lows with a break of 33 uh two i really want to see a daily or sorry yeah i really want to see a daily below about thirty-one thousand bucks i do think it's time to be a little bit more uh conservative at least for myself as a trader as uh, we are very tightly wound up and it is relevant to think that we actually might have a a legitimate breakout here but referencing the oh this is four hour let's go to daily for a second yeah referencing the daily bbwp we're actually trending down once again which tells me that we could go through a little bit more of a consolidation so this would also be a little bit more on the bull loss side it would suggest that you know while bitcoin probably does have the bottom side of the range i don't necessarily know that we see it fully break we'd expect volatility to be already very 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 low and looking for expansion which technically speaking it is below 50 percentile so you know it is relatively low but realistically we don't really see breakouts um until we get like extremely extremely low on the macro scale and this would be a macro scale move now of course if bitcoin does break to the downside there's going to be some pretty nasty targets uh, initiated if we throw on this right here let me actually go back down to the short-term time frames here um we will have targets uh, obviously down around well if we're going off of the fib extensions and also just this as a formation which we can actually do as well and let's just see if these match up with each other i'd be very very interested to see do something like this on a more conservative one and we can take a more aggressive one as well this one will be put would be pointed down towards about 20 uh, 25 to twenty-six thousand bucks interesting as that does line up with a lot of these accumulated wicks over here so i do like that and also i believe that's around our cme gap and if we take a more aggressive one, then we can probably even uh, get a little bit lower than that, probably somewhere around 20,000 bucks if I had to guess, because it's going to be about $11,000 range right there. And let's see what we got. Uh, it'd be something more like this, actually. Yes, and that'd be pointed down, yeah, around, uh, around low 20,000 bucks, actually. 
So fair enough on that one as well, depending upon how aggressive you do want to be. But I, I, you know, I'd be looking for bounces along, you know, each and every one of these levels anyways, just on short-term timeframes, assuming that Bitcoin does break down from here. Anyways, uh, putting on momentum oscillators on the short-term timeframes, what do we see? We do see, oh my fucking God, <laughs> we just uh, confirmed, or oh, I, I guess this didn't just happen, but earlier this morning, as I, as I was waking up, we did confirm hidden bearish divergence right here that got the next move back down to yesterday's lows. Okay, very classic stuff, yes, but uh, do we have further confirmation on top of that? I uh, I, I don't know if I'd say that just based off the four hour. Let's see what the 12 hour says. 12 hour TSI turning down below the bullish buy zone. Not good. 12 hour uh, RSI neutral bearish and daily is doing what? Daily is fucking bearish. <laughs> no doubt about that. Now, the daily is the one that really scares me here and, and probably the, the biggest bearish case as well for, you know, maybe even a breakdown uh, today or tomorrow. And that would be the daily TSI turning down right here. Playing out the same, the same trend line from our last few major highs, actually going all the way back to January, uh, January 9th, actually of this past year. Anyways, um, this lines up on all these tests with all these major highs right here. I'm talking about this high right here, this high right here, this high right here, this high right here, this high right here. And then as you can see, we are testing this once again, that came on the $41,000 tick that we saw last week. So I would say that that definitely does align a little bit more on the bearish case, of course. And now I want to go down to the very low term timeframes and uh, siphon up these ranges a little bit better. In fact, I think it would be best to do this on this chart with CME because I already, uh, I think I already got them in there. Yeah, there we go. Pretty damn simple stuff, actually. Yeah, and this one actually lined up really, really well. And in fact, you can already see that I did pull a Fibonacci uh, extension here. And we do see actually several uh, several levels of confluence around major fibs. In fact, the two spot 414 extension to the downside would be posted right around about uh, just below 24,000 bucks. We even see the three spot 272 right around your gap from December 2020, actually, all the way down at about uh, 18 and a half thousand bucks. So those would be the two major pivots that I'd be looking for on a downside move. Obviously, there will be there would be bounces along the ways, assuming that we do bring to the downside but keep in mind i'm not necessarily calling that just yet in fact it's not really for me to call like you're gonna fucking know if that happens look if bitcoin closes anywhere below the bottom side trolling to band today it's gonna it's gonna it's very likely to happen i shouldn't say it's gonna happen should always remain a little bit more on the neutral side as far as uh, as far as like youtube analysis goes but here's the thing now that we do have that bull trap as of last week we can now use that as your sort of uh bullish you know i wouldn't say continuation point but your your confirmation of this is fine essentially like everything's fine right uh not necessarily but but back above this failed, uh, you know, this failed rally that we saw last week, which is just in the, uh, you know, low 40s, essentially. So about 41,000 bucks, anywhere above the wick high on that or just closer on closure on new highs, which is about 40,200 would do it for me. And yes, I would get bullish for a move, you know, at the very least about 48,000 bucks. And then I'd be looking for, you know, consolidations and then, and then very likely continuations long term. So, uh, so fair enough on that. Oh, nice. We have another one of these very interesting people in the chats right now too, man. Do you, I got, I got, I just, I just can't like, uh, I just can't like imagine, man, like one day, sir, one day you're going to be on your deathbed surrounded by all the people that you love or love you maybe. And you're going to think to yourself, man, I wish I trolled crowns crypto cave more. That was really the highlight of my life. Fuck yeah, man. Great day. Very productive. I did it. I fucking did it, man. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. Um, there's only so much time in the world, man. There's only so much time in the world. And look, I have, I have sympathy. I have sympathy for that because, well, I mean, we all, we all, see you. We, we, we've all been that person at some point. But goddamn, man. <laughs> goddamn. What, sir? What? When you were like fucking 13, you know, you're in prank calling people and thinking that's funny. Um, you haven't. Well, that's because you leave a whole, yeah, that's because you lead a wholesome Finnish life, sir. Anyways, for us Americans out there who are absolutely fucked up from birth, well, that would be the case. Anyways, um, four hour TSI or sorry, no, no, not four, hour, but hourly TSI also turning down. I mean, you know, most of the short term time frames are just not looking too hot right here. So where would I start to switch around my short term time frame view? Uh, pretty simply put, you know, back around our weekly, uh, well, bit, or sorry, not not our weekly high, but the high that we saw on the weekend over the weekend right here, which is about 36,000. If that happens, I'd be looking for a general uh, move back up towards 37, 38 region. And, you know, this would start to look better. But uh, but for right now, it's, you know, it's eyes on the downside. I'm not necessarily saying that it's going to break to the downside at this exact moment, but I want to see something more conclusive until then. And I do think regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish, just like last week, remember, just like last week, regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish, very likely is going to test up into the low $40,000 territory. The same thing this week. I, I do think whether you're bullish or bearish, we will very likely see a test down to 31000 I want to see, however, where does this five-day deal to close? If it closes back above about 35, especially 36, 
I'd say blue loss hopes are still alive. That's going to look a lot like accumulation, especially below 33,000 bucks. And, you know, s still some more sideways bullshit, you know, annoyingness over the next month or two would be implied. But that would be essentially what I'd be looking for if I did want to remain uh, bullish. Um, but by the same token, you know, if bears do want to take over, it very likely does happen, um, you know, very, very soon, actually. Uh, let's see. Is there anything to be aware of on the two day? I mean, two day looks the same thing. 200 X benchmark average coming around 32,000 uh, bucks. What about three day? Three days all air, <laughs> all fucking air. And uh, what about the 12 hour here, too? Oh, by the way, three day. Oh, this is nasty. Three days having a cross between the 21 and 55. I do not like that one. Uh, well, I mean, I don't like that one if I want to be bullish, but if I want to be bearish, it's great, especially on a test into it. You know, that is kind of what you are looking for. And let's also go over here to our momentum charts as well. I just want to see what they're posting right now. Let's see. Uh, daily is daily is down and it's going to be staying down as long as below 39,000 bucks. Today is going to cross the downside. If we close below 34,600, that is also closing tonight at AP Eastern time. And the three day is not closing tonight. It's actually closing. Uh, in a couple days here as it just closed last night but that will cross the downside if we do close below about 32,850 but a little bit further away to be uh too concerned with as it is right now so you know again it, you know if i was going to put my name on it uh short term you know regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish i do think bitcoin will test somewhere down around uh, 31 to thirty-two thousand bucks i do not have an opinion on whether that actually breaks or not um there are certainly a lot more things pointing to further downside though i would say uh let's also just do a quick do we want to do a quick dive uh quick dissection of the 21 and 55 on this and eh, no, we don't really need to do that i think it kind of speaks for itself so fair enough um let's go down to lower term time frames here you can see on the very short term time frames, we do have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a range range behavior going on. I mean, basically, basically testing around, uh, I think it was Sunday low right here. So ultimately, uh, I'm not really making too much out of this, to be honest with you. It, if anything, I mean, it is a little bit more downsizing for the time being. But I think it's time to get onto the chatties right now. And I'll kind of leave you with this uh, as far as, uh, may, you know, just general Bitcoin analysis goes. Look, whatever Bitcoin does, all coins are going to follow. If it, if it breaks to the downside, all coins are going to get absolutely fucking smacked on the face. 99 percent of them maybe there's going to be one percent you know or, or not point not 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 one percent that actually do have a good time during this uh it's possible we do see it every once in a while you know, I would imagine it's probably been, you know, probably going to be some of the better actors that we've seen thus far. But as you know, as that goes, I am uh, I, I'd express, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, hesitation, a lot of hesitation or caution. Yeah, caution is actually the right word in this in this scenario uh, for that. Anyways. OK, cool, cool, cool. I think we got all of that. OK. All right. Let's take that off. Let's leave these on and let me get on over to the chat, see what lazy else is doing right now. And there we go. Oh, peanut gallery trading. What's up, man? Good to see you, Mr. Morris. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm glad that someone, uh, someone, someone, someone appreciates the good old Rick and Morty. Hey, sir, don't, don't throw shit at me. <laughs> it's a joke, sir. Take a fucking joke in the morning. Um, <laughs> cut your dick off. Okay, well, that's your problem, not mine. Anyway, Sam says, uh, Aussie dollar versus Canadian dollar, four hour daily. Sure, man. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, the, the, the perpetual oscillate the perpetual oscillator uh let's see let's first let's first put it on a daily then we'll go down to a four hour okay so daily's got an obvious range going on right here very very obvious range uh going on right here which you can actually make a lot of it in fact we do see our range lows somewhere down around here i'd say and then our range highs obviously right around here on a closing basis uh anywhere above 93.87 i would be looking for extension all the way up to about 94 and a half and all the way and any and any sort of move just down below 18th of june low i'd be looking for continuation to new lows uh in this case probably another bounce somewhere around about 92 and a half but ultimately continuation would be implied somewhere down around uh 91 and a half i'd say um anyways if we go down to the short term time frame to see if we can come up with a better buys short term yeah very likely does test the upside here uh, maybe back up to 93 uh eight rate region is not out of the question four hour tsi turning up four hour rsi rejecting the bearish control zone i'd give the short term another chance to move to the upside and then i want to see a closure above this region right here on a four hour however it's going to be a bit different than a daily i'd move it up just a smidgen and i'd move it up to about 94 cent even actually above there i'd look for a general continuation to this region right here which is 94.34 and um and then and then it starts to look a, you know a lot better as far as the long term goes on the daily but for right now um you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of similar to Bitcoin in a way, but we are seeing a, a bit more signs of accumulation in this region. We even do see that uh, daily might print hidden bullish divergence actually in a fan or not, not, not hidden, but phantom bullish di uh, divergence. And we do see that the uh, BBWP is extremely low. So this is, this would be a better signal that you're kind of looking for, for a bit more of accumulation going on in the lows right here. So I do like that actually. And I do think it will very likely test the upside at the very least. And do we get a, do we get a resolution above there? Perhaps yes. Okay, cool. 
All right. Um, 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 let's see what else we got. All right. Bitcoin Delphine says, Hey, I hey, appreciate that. Delphine always appreciate that. Uh, Scott, Scott Carney's back. SNDL weekly close for weekly <laughs> MACD cross. Um, let's see. First off, let's see what you're talking about. Okay. Sundial grows. So it's some sort of uh, weed stock. Um, looks like, uh, I, I stick with what I said last week, man. I do think this one does come down to like 70, 70 and a half cent. I do not like this. Uh, I mean, I don't like this chart long-term obviously, but short-term, you know, is this a reversal in progress? Yes. Do we come back down and test around, you know, 78 and a half or 79? I, I also think yes, but I suppose I would have a somewhat long-term bullish bias, I suppose. I mean, this is not like my favorite chart of all time. You're talking about the weekly MACD, um, SNDL that's on this chart over here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what sort of hoping we can pick out of my bunghole for you, sir. Uh, this is not helpful at all. Uh, in fact, this would be bearish, if anything. So I don't necessarily know where you're going with that one, but um, no, I, I do think next test is to the downside. And then you really want to see about 78 and a half to 79 cent hold and put in a higher low. If that does not happen, this rally is canceled, baby. And we're going back down to, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to retrace this whole bullshit because this thing is uh, very, 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 very questionable, I would say. But you know, I, I do respect the weekly trend. So I'd give it at least a chance to try for a higher low somewhere around here and then come back to it after that. So hopefully that is in some way helpful. Uh, Super Goo Lily, or you're, or sorry, you're asking about, uh, I, I think I actually even missed your question. Like you're asking about what, what would you need to cross to the upside? It's not happening. <laughs> it's very unlikely to happen. Uh, I, I w there, there's really nothing like interesting to say about this as long as it's, uh, as long as it's below about one and a quarter, put it bluntly. Uh, Super Goo Lily says, hello, sir. Can you mimic the battle cry and chivalry to live on stream? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna oh my god man I don't know if my voice can handle it right now but uh maybe at the end of the stream where I don't need my voice anymore after that could you have a look at uh Dow Jones yes okay so Dow Jones and you're talking about short term um let's see Dow Jones 33,000 bucks right here and this one was kind of leading the party to the downside did break that nice sort of uh for of uh, formation that we had at the top right there I do think this one does uh, also kind of fit into the narrative that we very likely do test more downside overall. But you are not asking about that. You're asking about very short term time frames. I'm going to go down to a four hour and probably an hourly. I'd be looking for a bounce here, if anything. Um, you know, maybe, I, I do think this market opens up on a bounce for Monday, uh, you know, around US Open. But, um, you know, any as you know, as long as it's below about 33, seven, man, I mean, there's not really too many good things to say about this um, as far as that goes. So short term, yeah, it very likely does bounce. I mean, we see four hour RSI getting extremely, extremely deep right there, which is not a thing in and of itself i mean obviously can always go lower yes but this is going to make it a possibility that we could see a bit of um a bit of uh what's it called um uh, you know a bit of uh bullish divergence because it's going to be very difficult to kind of keep up that momentum in that case but is it there right now no we don't even have the fucking local low right now so what you you what you'd expect to see is like you know perhaps a low prints right here rally up a bit then break down once again put in a slightly lower low then you get your bullish divergence and then you play a bounce and perhaps that bounce comes up all the way to like 33.5 or 33.6 but as long as that bounce just does not get above 33.7 this thing is uh very very likely to continue with the overall downwards uh twist here i mean look at the monthly for right now the monthly uh looks i wouldn't say it's atrocious but taking out the last low of the prior monthly which was essentially a doji kind of spinning top dildo right here is uh you know is a reversal type of signal and technically speaking i should have a target down to about thirty-two thousand bucks overall again you're not asking about the higher term time frame so i'm just you know I'm, you know I, I i but i do feel like it's important to say that and you know if we're going to the hourly down here which i said i'd look at as well yeah it's probably looking for a bounce short term i mean anywhere anywhere around 33 uh 2 to 33 3 like on the hourly is completely fine on the four i would say anywhere anywhere around uh, yeah anywhere between 33 5 and 33 6 is completely fine as well but uh, I have no real thing to change around as long as it's below about 33.7 as far as the long term goes. So play that one at your own peril. You can always, always, always trade with the trend and let it be your friend. It can be your best friend if you just let it be. If you just, just let it be. What's up, Moral? Moral says, can you look at Japan's uh, Nikkei 225? Yes. In fact, I actually think I have it all, all the way over here already. Uh, maybe I don't. Maybe I did take it off, but uh, eh, it looks like I took it off. All right. Well, whatever. NI225. Let's see what we got. All right. What is Japan doing? How are they? Oh, dear Lord. God damn, man. Japan opened up on a nice dump Ola. Uh, this looks like it wants to go lower. I'd be looking for a move down to about 27.3. We do see daily TSI turning down. Uh, we do see daily RSI hit and bearish divergence. I mean, uh, I'd be looking for a move down to the low side of the range and probably bounce there. Yes. But with the way that this is looking, could we look for further continuation long term? 
Um, possible, but probably not this month, uh, you know, at the very least. I mean, this is a pretty good chart long term, to be fair. It is, it is a monthly uptrend after all. So uh, while I do think it's got, some, uh, it's got some more downside here, I would, I would be looking for a bounce somewhere around this region first and then come back to it after that. Uh, if that area does start to fail, I'd be looking uh, sniffly further down, 25-7 20, uh, region. But give it a chance to bounce first, then we'll come back to it after that. I imagine U.S. markets are probably going to decide the general direction. And this one's actually kind of playing a bit of catch up as it didn't play out that downside move that we saw on last Friday on traditional markets. M. Scott Carney says, Elsa is laughing because she likes it. That is exactly right, sir. You can read her mind. And that is all that it means. Uh, Benny B says, do you use tick below previous one hour candle low for short entries? Fuck no. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea to do, man. You are going to get whipped out of a lot of positions just because price action is obviously whipped wiki and a lot of the time you know those are just liquidations going and you just it's 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 not it's not it's not a very good standardized way to be going off of i like going off of uh, closures for that reason anyways your question is atr for stop loss that can definitely work um that can definitely work but uh it's 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 not my preferred way of doing it but it, it, it is viable yes if that is your general question um hello from san diego fuck yeah man san diego is the best place in uh, california for sure uh, but let me just double check that i that i understood this correctly okay so you're saying are you are you like asking specifically about our current structure right here it, you know if we take out last hourly low would i be look would i be shorting for uh, or sorry would i enter a short on that i mean technically speaking it'd be this low right here so it wouldn't even be the last hourly low it'd actually be this one right here would be your continuation if you do want to play like that Look, you can play like that. I don't like playing like that because I find that closures are a lot more confidence inducing. And a lot of the time, wicks can just end up being, you know, liquidity hunt, which you end up being liquidity for that. And, uh, and, you, and you end up, you know, uh, essentially selling a, uh, you know, a trap. Uh, which is not a good way to make money in my experience but obviously you know there are good you know pros about being uh, aggressive as well i mean you know you're going to get a better entry uh, technically speaking or or usually you're going to get a better entry and uh, and so potentially more profit but that comes with more risk so for me i don't like that you know if you know if it, you know if it works for you and you've back tested it and you liked it uh, then by all means go for it but you know i give you the general answer that i give for any you know uh, strategy related question without super specifics is look back test it see if you like the results if you if the results are acceptable to you then go for it man absolutely i mean who am i to tell you that it's right or wrong if you like the results i mean that's a personal thing obviously but for myself you know i, I can just relate those thoughts and sort of what my what my experiences have been with that all right uh pablo south bonjour man how you doing brother new core to the moon four hour daily please let's check it out all right let's do the let's do the weekly perusal of new core over here we've been following this one for a long time are we still going to the moon or not okay so we did get the pullback we're getting it into the into the uh, lower 90s i would actually be looking for a bit of a bouncy bounce here I mean, could it come all the way back down to like 85 and a half? I suppose it's possible, but you know, looking at the monthly right here, I'm not bearish on this man. Uh, I don't really see any uh, any real reason to be bearish on this like long term. But what specific time frames are you asking for? Four hour daily. Okay, let's go to the four hour first. Uh, four hour. Four actually does look looks like it wants a little bit more downside here before a bit of a bounce. Uh, maybe down around about 90 bucks even. And you're also asking about a daily t or what, was it a daily? It was a daily. Yes. Um, yeah, I do think you're kind of within a bounty territory here, to be fair. It's a monthly that I'm really focused on for this one, which makes me long term bullish. Short term, can we pull back? I mean, you know, even into like the uh, the upper 80s. Yeah, it's possible um, for sure. But I wouldn't necessarily look at that as like full on bearish just yet. It's not full on bearish until we fade the actual breakout. That's when you can get really fucking bearish on this one. But long term, I do like it, actually. Uh, even very, very short term. Let's see what the hourly says. Hourly showing a little bit of signs of slowing down here. Do we see any sort of bullish advertence? We do actually on the hourly RSI. I know you didn't ask about this one, but three drives of that very likely does bounce it up uh, to open up this week, maybe back up to about 96. But looking at the four hour, I do think that that bounce probably gets faded. And then we see maybe another drive down to like low 90s. Ultimately, though, this is all set up for the monthly, man. And I want to really, really hammer in this point. This is a setup for the monthly because I, I mean, the monthly is just generally good here. There, there's nothing really bad to say about it after a about a 12, uh, 12 year long accumulation phase. So uh, again, uh, you know, in worst case scenario, I'd probably say like 85, 86 bucks to the downside. I don't necessarily think that that's happening right there. Probably opens up on a, on a bounce, bounce gets faded, and then you find your actual lows, and then we'll watch the monthly close after that. All right, let's see what else we got, man. Uh, Jack Essiman says, "Good morning, Crown. What's up, man? Uh, Ethereum daily? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's uh, let's look at Ethereum Bitcoin right here. I'm very curious to see how this one's uh, kind of following around. Are we finding anything resembling a bit of a low? Uh, well, not an hourly. Uh, let's talk about a daily right here. Yes. Okay. So we did say over the weekend and at the end of last week that this would be your bouncy area somewhere right around about six million uh, satoshis." that is and i would be sticking with that and i do think that this one will trade back up to about six and a half million satoshis right here this 
this brings in a few things, uh, however, because we would expect if Bitcoin is going to break down or, or just break any side of the range, that is, be above about 40, uh, 41,000 bucks or below about 31,000 bucks, then we'd expect to see Bitcoin dollars continue to rise, which means that Ethereum Bitcoin would continue to go down. But this is very not in that vein, <laughs> very not in that vein. So what does that suggest? It does suggest that I do think the Bulaz hopes are still alive, or at least it'd be another uh, sort of um, metric on the same vein as that, in the sense that uh, if this is going to bounce from here, which I think I, I think is very, very likely, probably bounces back up to about six and a half, uh, yeah, about six and a half to six, uh, maybe even six spot six million Satoshis uh, short termish, uh, you know, over the next couple of days then we've then that would be kind of implying that we probably don't break the higher term time frame range and uh and while bitcoin i do think does test down somewhere around 31 or thirty two thousand bucks we probably don't break it and that could lead into the five day closure that we spoke about earlier which can have greater effects you know long term but for right now this would actually be uh somewhat of a good thing i do suppose anyways you're talking about or you're asking about a daily and weekly okay so dailies uh in bounce bounce territory six spot uh five to six spot six so i feel quite vindicated on that call uh, weekly is in limbo here, however, because we do have, I mean, we do totally have a bit of a lower high right there, to be fair, although it's not like super conclusive and I wouldn't necessarily say that's like the most obvious one of all time. Let's see if it works on a five day. Uh, no, it does not work on a five day. What about on a three day? Three day it does work on. Yes, but that one's in a bounty territory as well. I'd give it the benefit of the doubt in this case, actually. I would give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, again, mostly based off the monthly kind of, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's, say it's like the same thing as new core, but you know, you're seeing a macro breakout here. It's not necessarily operating on new all time highs, but I do like this long term. And again, we do have EIP 1559 coming in next month. So that could be a bit of a catalyst fundamentally speaking speaking uh, for this one and uh and i generally uh have good things to say about all higher term time frames weekly i i, I would say based off the daily it probably does bounce a bit up so the weekly is throwing me for a bit of a loop if we go down to like very low term time frames what do we see we actually see some uh, some jewel buy signals over here now the the big one played out uh or the big one already got signal right here actually we are getting a continuation signal right here thus far so i would say on the four hour you can actually come up with a very very reasonable range which would just be right here six spot one million satoshis as long as you're above there i do look at this as bouncy territory and the bouncy uh, sort of target would be six spot five and then maybe even a continuation of six spot six long term uh maybe not long term but like medium term i'd say um so cool elsa moon oh your name is elsa moon holy sh shit <laughs> what the fuck is this uh accidentally bought matic at 140 how did you accidentally buy something um i'm just curious i'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make fun of you but like how did you accidentally buy something did you just like i meant the red button but i got the green button instead the fuck is going on here man my color blindness is absolutely wrecking me cz refund please could it get there in really short term uh like very very short term should i just take a four percent l on this mofo okay well this is always a difficult question to give like exact fucking um uh adv advice because this is not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor um do i think it get back up to uh 140 yeah i do think so actually um that is just your very short term high structure right here and again it's going to depend mostly on bitcoin and you do have a very obvious rich management point uh point on the downside right here as well obviously that would imply that you are going to lose more if it does get hit off but do I think that you get somewhere around there? Probably yes. Why? I think 139 is not out of the question here. Let's see what Mentum also to say. We see four hour TSI turning up. Weak as fuck though, I would say. Four hour RSI. Looks like it wants to have a little bit of a leg up here too. So I'd give it the benefit of the doubt for now. And this is again, a low volatility swing on the lows, which typically does align for a bit of a bouncy bounce. Let's see what the daily says, just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, daily's looking a little bit more bouncy to me as well. So I, you know, I do think regardless of whether bullish bears, you probably are looking for a bit of a bouncy bounce here weekly. Yeah, we Weekly's probably looking for a bouncy bounce as well. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely not the most confidence inducing of all time, but I do want to pull you over here to the monthly as well. And, I, you know, I don't have any problems with the monthly. I mean, this is a pretty, pretty fucking powerful monthly, all things considered. So does a, does a weekly get another anemic bounce off the 10 simple? I, you know, I guess you give it the benefit of the doubt in these cases. So uh, I would say, yeah, prob probably you end up being all right. But, you know, understand where your risk is on the downside. You could use last hourly low as a continuation point in this in this case. I do think so just because it is, you know, it, it, it is such like a hot thing and you don't want to, you don't want to risk more than you really need to. But uh, uh, in the future, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm generally curious. How, how do you do that? How do you do that? I accidentally bought Matic at 140. Um, what is, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that actually mean? What's up, Poncho? How you doing, man? My buterol, sir. Please, four hour and daily. Sure, man. Sure. Uh, let's see what Mr. Buterol is doing over here. Where are you, beautiful bitch? You 31, or, sorry, 2136. And you are looking at a four hour and daily. Is that right? Yes, you are. Obvious, uh, obvious steaming turn. Uh, but would be interested to see your take regarding ranges. 
Yeah, okay, so we, I mean, do you consider this a test down of the 200x much we average yesterday? Close enough is close enough in this case. I would be looking for bounces around there. If Bitcoin tests down to like 31 or 32,000 bucks, do I think we get another test down there? Yes, I do. This is an awful chart, uh, all things considered. It's an absolutely fucking terrible chart, no doubt about that. Um, you know, this one's been pretty damn bad after we identified this lower high here. I think I did that on a short video uh, about almost a week ago now. And well, we see daily TSI turning down alongside daily RSI, which is neutral down. I mean, it's not fucking good there. Anyways, if you're talking about four hour ranges, we can come up with that very, very simply put here. Very, very, uh, very, very easy in this case, actually as we do see low side right here, obviously. And then we can just move this 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 failure point down to our weekend highs. It looks like at 2285 region above there. I would be looking for a bit of an extension all the way up so, somewhere around the 200 simple in this case. That's that's naturally coming down would be somewhere maybe like 2450. I think it's a little bit less likely, you know, look for Bitcoin on direction here. But to, you know, to keep it real, to use a bad fucking stupid phrase, uh, we did just get hit in bearish divergence right here. You know, you could say that move. I mean, that move already did play to the downside of the uh, of the current four hour range. But, you know, anywhere below our weekend lows, it looks like uh, this would be 2046. And yeah, I'd be looking for I'd be looking for this one to have the next continuation phase to about uh, 1900 or so. I, I really do not like this chart, man. Like looking at the five day right here, this is just atrocious. Um, you know, if, if Bitcoin breaks down, this one's going to find its footing somewhere around uh, 1750 for like an actual bounce. And if Bitcoin actually breaks below 30,000 bucks, I'd be looking for this one to really shatter. Um, you know, really, really shattered down to 1400, maybe even lower than that over time. Uh, but but for right now, I mean, the five, I, I think this, the five day kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I, I, I do think it will try for a bounce somewhere around here. Yes, but God damn, man, that, that just looks like a bunch of lemmings being pushed off a cliff just very, very slowly and painfully. It does not look good, to be fair. Uh, three day, same thing. Buy daily, same shit. I mean, yes, it's it's kind of in like a short term bouncy territory, but he, here's a weekly man. I do not like this. I do not like that, man. Uh, so while you are asking about short term time frames, that's how I'd kind of plot the ranges. But keep in mind, you know, we are kind of at the precipice of a high term time frame range uh, move, which in this case for Mr. Buterall, uh, doesn't look the best, but again, Mr. Budol does not get to choose a direction. Bitcoin does, and uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see like another test back up to like I don't know twenty three fifty or twenty four hundred uh, in the interim. Definitely possible. It doesn't really destroy anything on the higher term time frames. But here's here's my big issue with this with this price action. I don't give a fuck about a, a, a regular simple moving average death cross. I think they're I think they're garbage. I think that that's you know for traders who usually have like very low experience. Uh, exp exponential moving averages um, in this case though are exponentially more powerful, and they actually are drawing closer and closer together. And this is pretty much what you do look for. Uh, and you can see that they're already being respective, right? You see the 200 exponential moon average right here. This purple moon average is already governing price action. Highs, highs, highs. As long as Bitcoin's kind of been consulting within this region between there and basically the 377, which is kind of like your yearly moving average. If the 55 crosses the downside of this one, which is, is not happening today. It's not even happening probably even this. Well, it might happen this week, but uh, it's, not, it's certainly not happening today unless we close below. Um, unless we close below. What the fuck? Uh, where? Oh, I don't even have it on there. Yeah, fuck it. Doesn't matter. It, it's it's not. It's it's actually impossible today. To be fair, um, but uh, you know, if that if that does happen, look, uh, <laughs> very 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 likely Bitcoin will drop below thirty thousand bucks if that does happen. But hey, that also means again, if Bitcoin does even just close above the two hundred x month average right here, which is essentially where we got rejected last week. I would uh, I would actually um, I would actually get bullish um, at least for a move into the into the deeper forties. Uh, but as of right now, you know, we're not necessarily close to that. So it's, it's not like the best topic of conversation. And we do have to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more subdued today in our, uh, <laughs> in our hopium injection, right? Anyways. Um, okay, cool. Go like it says, hope you're well, <laughs> hope you're well doggy four hour daily, please. Uh, are you talking about, um, oh, I hope you're well doggy four hour daily. Got it. <laughs> hope you're well too, sir. Uh, let's see, we got doggy point over here, doggy USD. And uh, oh, I should probably turn on the alerts once again. There we go. Whoopsies. Uh, wow, this one looks like absolute dog shit. Jesus, man. Uh, daily shit, weekly shit. Uh, weekly, I'd probably be looking for another short term bounce off of like 23.7 region. Um, you know, is that is does that end up just being another short term bounce? Perhaps yes, but monthly, here's where things get a lot more interesting. Okay, if we do take out last monthly low, which to be fair is like not really anywhere near our current price action, it'd probably imply like another 20 to 30% let's just see 
um, yeah, about 30% actually, uh, then yes, I would be calling uh, this one completely done. It's going to start to have the long-term bleed down to down below 10 cents. You know, I've been saying this for a while at some point, you know, over the next couple of years, you will see doggy coin break down below 10 cents. It'll, it will, it will extremely likely will go back down to, uh, to single digits. I mean, this is, this is your real history of doggy coin right here. In fact, this is actually not the best history because we can probably get Poloniex. Here we go. And this is a monthly and this is just this is just garbage i mean this thing has no business being traded and you know in hindsight if you want to be if you want to be that guy just being like um excuse me well realistically this was kind of your canary in the coal mine if you wanted one for this market being absolutely ridiculous i mean i do not understand i do not in any way shape or form understand with all due respect uh let me just pull this up actually i i, I need to pull up a visual for this um <clears throat> Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so this is what I'm referencing right here. Uh, this market cycle cheat sheet, which look, I mean, there is a lot of validity to this, no doubt about that. Um, you know, markets generally kind of move like that on parabolic market cycles, yes. But you're seeing like a lot of, um, you're probably seeing like a lot of uh, people on Twitter or YouTube uh, say that we're in like the disbelief phase over here. This, uh, I, uh, <laughs> you have to be getting paid to say something like that in my opinion, because when you see something like fucking doggy coin, doggy coin, which goes to the moon and beyond. And look, this is log scale. So this is deceiving with how much we actually saw. It went up 26,000 plus percent. Okay. This is ridiculous. This thing is literally fucking worthless. It does nothing. It has no development on it. It is literally fucking vaporware. It is something that no reasonable person should ever touch for a long-term investment. Yeah, you can trade it just, you can anything else, but Realistically, that is my very harsh opinion on this one. And when you say that we're in like a disbelief phase, like you see over here, you cannot explain that within the context of doggy coin price action. This is like your canary in the coal mine, essentially. And realistically, I mean, do you think that we reached belief, thrill, euphoria? during all of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, everyone in the fucking world knew what doggy coin was, probably even more than Bitcoin with Elon Musk, you know, shouting it out and then also uh, and then also getting on what's called um, uh, Saturday Night Live. And and what happened after that? We got our complacency bound. I, I mean, I think that's pretty fucking obvious right here thus far. So at some point, this one will come back down below 10 cents. But is it happening today or tomorrow? Absolutely fucking not. Probably probably not even for the next year. It's going to take a long time. But all rallies, as you can see, long term do fail on this one. And this one's going to be no different. Uh, I would strongly suggest. And in fact, looking at this right here, I mean, you know, you can't really say that it's 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 fully broken down just yet. We have a very obvious level right here, right around about 25 cent even. So uh, so so a quarter. It's technically like just a tenth of a cent below there uh, for what it's worth. But here's the thing, man. There is absolutely nothing at all whatsoever, even fucking remotely bullshit to be speaking about on this thing, as long as it's below this level right here, 34 and and uh, some odd change. So as long as it's below there and as long as it's kind of baking within this range, I do look at this one as very likely to break down. Uh, yeah, we already spoke about the monthly. The monthly makes it easy if we do take our last month low, which is uh, just below 20 cents. And yeah, I'd, 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 you know, I'd be willing to call this one done for for the foreseeable future and uh, work its way back down below uh, 10 cents over time. Um, let's see, what about the low term time frames? You know, do we get another bounce here? It's, it's looking like yes, just kind of similar to Bitcoin probably gets another bounce. But um, if Bitcoin breaks down, this thing, this thing will absolutely fucking shatter. So again, Bitcoin gets this out of the direction. While this one looks like absolute shit, as do many other altcoins, if Bitcoin bounces once again, you're going to see them bounce as well. Probably not as strongly, probably a lot more of an anemic balance, yes. But, 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 but the second that Bitcoin actually breaks down or shows, you know, a, a, a dramatic amount of weakness is the second that you're going to see this one just completely get fucking thrown by the wayside, as are many other altcoins. And this one would be uh, probably one of the first ones to do that. Um, so, you know, I, I know that a lot of people are not going to like statements like that, um, especially if you're like, you know, got caught up in all of the hype and everything. Uh, that's fair enough. You can take out your anger on me. I can take it. It's like uh, I feel like Batman, you know, but um, but realistically, in a more in a more serious tone, uh, look, like ask yourself um, if, if, if the markets really are going to come down here, which I, I think I think it's reasonable to say that it's at the very least possible here based off of traditional markets. Do you think people are going to hold doggy coin uh, first over like Apple stock or Facebook stock or Amazon or, or, or Google? No, I mean, they're probably not going to hold any of them to be fair, but they're definitely not going to fucking hold doggy coin. I'll tell you that. Um, so, you know, be very, 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 very uh, cognizant of that effect, because I think that there's just so much very interesting analyses going on with with things like that. So hopefully that is uh, in some way in some way helpful. But look, is it going to break down right now? I, 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 Probably not. No, it, it depends on what Bitcoin does, of course. 
Um, let's see, Tiffany Giles, what's up, Tiffany? Uh, could you take a look at Matic BTC chart for weekly? Sure. Okay, so we got, yeah, and I imagine the Bitcoin chart is probably gonna be uh, decent, I would, I would think. Um, weekly, okay, weekly is very bizarre looking here. Did, are we trying to put in a higher low here on the weekly? I would say that that's certainly not confirmed or anywhere near confirmed just yet. Uh, there is an obvious trade in this one though. If we do take out last week's high, which is 42.52, then yeah, I would be looking for this one to pop back up towards uh, maybe even all the way up to 4,800 Satoshis. Monthly, I really like actually. I don't really have any bearish thing to say about, about the monthly long term. Um, daily looks good short term. Daily actually looks like it does want to pop up here, 40, uh, 42.65. And anywhere above 42.65, even on a tick, I'd extend that target significantly towards uh, almost that 46, 4700 target, actually. So all those do kind of work synonymously with each other. Um, and uh, and if you put a gun in my head, yeah, I actually do think this one does go up from here. It actually looks uh, decent. I really, really like this when we see hidden bullish divergence, multiple drives after essentially just a bullish reset, as far as the daily is concerned, alongside daily TSI with BBWP, our volatility based indicator, incredibly low. So yeah, I do think that it does pop up here. Uh, so fair enough. This would be another good signal, um, you know, for the bull laws, uh, I guess, at least short and medium term. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I do, again, want to represent both sides as accurately as possible, or at least as, uh, you know, as as thoroughly as possible. And I, I would not be willing to say that Bitcoin is like, or, or the market in general is like destined to break down at this exact moment. Um, I do still think that there's a little bit of hopium left, but uh, certainly there are a lot more things on the bearish side than the bullish side. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, a chocolate bar review channel. What's up, man? What's your favorite chocolate? I like Toblerone, actually, but I can't eat it because I'm lactose intolerant and I will destroy both my Angus and my bathroom if I do eat. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, can, I, can I read Alice? We'll get, we'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. Oh, it was the first one. No, I don't. Uh, Alice? Uh, Allie? Ah, Allie. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll go to Allie first. Uh, Ali says, hey, Crown, cheers for the streams. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, curious how, you, how to explain the difference, the levels difference on the daily between uh, Bitcoin USD and Bitcoin Aussie dollar. Weak Aussie dollar versus USD. Well, I mean, they're obviously going to be changing over time. And, and here's the thing what you should really be looking at, Ali, is you should be looking at uh, Aussie dollar, US dollar to understand um, that relationship, which obviously Aussie dollar has been, well, on the floor, getting killed by the US dollar. On the weekly, yeah, on the weekly, getting this first major pullback here too, after a... After a decent reversal, yes, but this one is still long-term bearish, actually. In fact, this one looks like it just hit another lower high, in fact. Um, so what do I make of that? Or, or let me just go back to your question really quick, and then we'll go back to chocolate uh, bar review. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, curious how to explain the levels difference on... Yeah, so that would explain the different levels between Bitcoin USD versus Bitcoin Aussie dollars. When you look at them, uh, when you look at these two uh, against each other, you know, these are two moving parts. These are two moving parts. And to be fair, Aussie dollar did have a, you know, pretty good most of the uh, last year or so from May 2020 to where we're at right now. But this is the reversal, it looks like to me. And I do think that this one will continue with long-term downtrend or at least coming back down to like 70 cents or so uh, the aussie dollar had a nice rally there but it does look more or less done for now uh let's also go check out the quarterly as well just out of curiosity yep another lower high it looks like and not looking too hot uh, coming into the quarterly close alongside hidden bearish divergence uh, nearly being confirmed so i would say that this uh that that is very likely going to account for the difference but just out of curiosity let's see what Bitcoin Aussie dollar looks like. Now, keep in mind, Ali, uh, oh, well, first off, we have no history for this chart, realistically, but um, keep in mind that, uh, first off, the well, the, the prices are going to be naturally different because, you know, Aussie dollar and US dollar are not the same thing, obviously, but they're moving. And I'm not exactly sure exact, uh, exactly where you're going with this, to be honest with you, but uh, we see a very similar chart here, to be fair. This one's actually a little more obvious, in fact. Um, in fact, I kind of like this one, but what I would say, Ali, is that it's very unhelpful to look at the Aussie dollar um, or sorry, the the Bitcoin Aussie dollar uh, chart because it's just not the one that's the most liquid. It's not the one that everyone's kind of running off of. And I imagine that the volume done on this chart is just a sliver of a fraction of what goes on in Bitcoin US dollar. So that one's obviously, uh, you know, always going to be the better chart to be going off of. Uh, but if you're going off of this chart right here, the levels are actually more or less the same. I mean, we're, we're caught within a sideways uh, rectangle, essentially. Um, another another fifth grade pattern or first grade pattern, whatever the fuck. Uh, but yeah, looking at this right here, I mean, pretty much the same thing. You know, do we get a bounce first? Probably yes, but uh, it's the reaction from that bounce that that has me concerned. So uh, so hopefully that is that is kind of what you were referencing. And we'll go back to Mr. Chocolate Bar Review Channel. <laughs> All right. Hello, good sir. Thoughts on Woo on the weekly? Okay, so you're talking about symbol W-O-O-U-S-D. 
All right, we'll go to uh, Huabi for this one, a very highly esteemed exchange. And you are looking at what? It sounded these dips better than others. And yes, this is a chocolate bar review channel. Oh my God, I need to check this out. Hold on, let me, uh, let me save this. Uh, <laughs> are you actually a child as well? What are you doing in this market, sir? <laughs> uh, hey, you actually picked out a pretty, uh, pretty interesting altcoin here. All things considered, it doesn't look as shitty as pretty much anything else. In fact, um, it, it, is, it is actually handling it a lot better than most, uh, than most in this market, just in general. Um, this would be one of the better trusts we've seen today in fact um look i i actually kind of like this one do i think if bitcoin actually breaks the macro range this one won't follow probably uh, probably not you know it's just just very unlikely but for right now what do you have you have reaccumulation going on after a bit of a short-term reversal here so i actually do kind of like it at least if i was just looking at this one and where's your next breakout level above 108 109 region up here and you can start to look back towards moves um maybe back around the prior highs somewhere about a buck and a quarter to a buck uh, buck 30. Um, would look pretty damn good but that also implies if you break the higher low structure which is this low right here 84 uh 86 86 40 ish region i'd be looking for this one to inevitably come all the way down to like 71 and a half and maybe in low over time it really depends what bitcoin does right but uh based off the weekly based off the daily yeah this is de definitely one of the better charts no no doubt about that uh, momentum monsters are more or less on the healthier side i'd say too so yeah fair enough uh not bad there he is. What's up, Josh? Yo, bro, I'm on the sidelines and increasing my cash. I like it. There you fucking go, baby. As I sell into bounces, got shiv. Oh, baby, for, for PS5. Last minute, they took off a cross plat. Wait, what? They took off cross, cross, cross platform? Man, uh, hopefully you can add me. My name on that game is Total Crown, but I do play on PC. So hopefully we can actually get a, a party together. But yeah, man, you know, that that is a very mature decision to do. And that is honestly one of the most important things to recognize uh which in your case i believe you are more on the investor side than like a uh, short-term trader side and when you're an investor i mean you always want to have at least some of your portfolio at least like fucking five percent of your portfolio in cash because you want to be able to buy up you know those dastardly you know outlier situations those 10 sigma event type situations like a coronavirus dump time because i mean that can just i mean that can make your year or, or maybe make, make your next few years if you do it properly um but what you're doing right now is, is perfect i mean you're essentially accumulating cash so you're giving yourself a good position to put on better positions and that's what it's all about man rotating your own capital and making sure that you are going to be in a you're going to be in the optimal spot to take advantage of any sort of you know very very nasty price action both to the upside or the downside of which you you know you you are in the the best possible spot right now the best possible spot i mean you know if bitcoin comes down and you want to play a bounce you can easily do that if bitcoin goes up and you want to play a bit of a pullback you can do that maybe you even say oh we got to reverse right here and now i feel with now i feel confident i can trade with confidence or i can invest with confidence there you fucking go, man. That's excellent. That is a very much mature decision. And that uh, com completely, co uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, not coincide the opposite of that that completely goes against what i think most people uh do and most people have an issue with which is they over invest right they don't just over invest they get over leveraged too which you know it's, it's just kind of sad but also kind of funny anyways my point with that is is that a lot of people feel like they always need to be in a trade and that they're not doing something that they're not in a trade look if you are in cash that is a position and sometimes that is one of the better positions in fact and in, in fact i'd say it's always a good position to have at the very least with some of your reserves there is never a situation where it makes sense to be like fully 100 um invested in my opinion because you just don't know when an outlier situation comes along and uh and that 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 truly is awesome man because um you know most people have the opposite problem they 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 get over invested and then they have no fucking money for when they actually is like a legitimate opportunity they're always like looking for an opportunity look at the end of the day your trades generally speaking or investments generally speaking should be relatively obvious when you know what you want like you and which you should you should know these things because you should have filled out some sort of a trade strategy in your own terms in your own definitions obviously i have one on this channel that you can reference yourself if you want uh in the video playlist but um you know and and, and, and that's going to give you a good blueprint for that i mean that could even just be it to begin with but i would strongly suggest that you do that so that you don't get caught in these trades just trading off of a whim i mean i was watching this guy crypto fucking keith the other day and it's like i can't tell if this is a troll if this is real because it, it's it's almost as if there's like it's, it's just you need to be in position every goddamn second and what does that come alongside with uh well typically very terrible results at least from what i saw which i imagine a lot of other people and myself included have had that issue in the past that was one of my biggest sticking points in trading was thinking that i always need to be in a trade because i felt like 
when I am a trader, right? Which I was, I started off as, you know, as basically an assistant to my mentor as a market maker. And I eventually became a market maker authorized trader. And I felt like because my title or because, you know, I identified myself as a trader that I needed to always be making trades, right? It's like, I'm a trader, I make trades. So I always need to be making trades. That's what I thought trading was it's like, oh, there's always something to do. You know, there's always something to be here. No, in fact, a lot of the time, uh, what I learned in traditional marks is like, realistically for the first hour and hour to hour and a half of the day i'd probably you know i'd probably do like 90 to 99 percent of my business for that day and then the last half hour of the day i'll do the rest <laughs> the, the whole thing in between almost rarely anything ever happened actually um is mo most most people just would take it off and when i first began i would always be trying to like fit trades in like looking for a reason to trade rather than just saying oh just observing okay well this one's an obvious one right here i'll take that okay boom bomb we're you know we're done for the day that's it Instead, you know, I, I definitely struggle with that. And I think and I think a lot of other people struggle with that as well. And if I had to like put a word on it or, or had to like make a scenario for it, it's because it's because of the way that we're kind of con conditioned in the Western society. Like, you know, how do you grow up? You grow up in, you know, going to school and being told what to do and, you know, doing your homework and everything like that. And, and you always feel like you're being lazy if you're not doing that. And that's kind of what I felt like when I was first learning to trade is like, I'm being lazy. I'm not doing my job if I'm not trading. It's like, no, this is like the one job where it's probably more important to understand when not to do something than when to do something, or I would say just as important actually. But, uh, but because of the way that we're kind of, you know, raised and everything, you feel like you're lazy and you feel like you undeserve it. Or at least that's the way that I felt like, um, when I was first learning and not, you know, making actual trades, it's like, I'm wasting my time here, you know, but, uh, but at the end of the day, that was probably one of the bigger things that I had to learn for myself in order to kind of graduate from not, not, not having great success to having consistent success. Um, so hopefully that, that was, uh, that was in some way helpful, probably not to you because you already are past that issue, but perhaps other people out there as well. All right, Micah, R, uh, Micah says uh, Zoom ZM for our daily. Okay, we got uh, ZM right here. I imagine this one's going to have a pretty damn good chart, especially granted, I remember from last time we looked at it, he said four hour and daily. Four hours good. Four hours about to get a golden cross right here. Maybe a short term pullback to 367 and a half is possible, but ultimately I would be looking for a further trend continuation. I'd just be using this as a bit of a, uh, you know, as a bit of a pivot. 360 is your last higher low. And I'd just be gen generally looking for upside continuation somewhere around 390 uh, to 395 region is fair game daily um yeah anywhere around the 200 simple right here which is actually 390 ish region uh it's fair game and uh the daily is a little bit more under pressure yes but i do like the reversal for now and i do play this one as you know somewhat bullish i suppose as long as it's above basically that last higher low actually which is also on the daily so we do a reversal right there as well and i imagine weekly is yeah weekly is fine in fact weekly makes me uh, a lot more confident that this one will test into like 390 or 400 bucks and you know while it probably plays out a short-term pullback there this one does look like it wants to pop back up to 440 overall before this is all said and done it looks good looks good one of the better trusts we've seen today all right mr gwen how you doing mr sebastian uh hi hi sir uh bcrx daily weekly okay seems to be losing steam uh-oh bcrx all right let's see what we got here bio Chris farm we got we got a bio farm right here uh yeah short term it is lo losing a little bit of steam yes but um i don't hate this chart at least at first glance but let's see what time for okay you said daily weekly yeah okay let's let's get the full picture on this one first uh let's go to the weekly i also want to see a monthly um yeah, I mean, short, short term, it is going to lose a little bit of steam. I mean, that's pretty damn common stuff to come back down and retest your prior breakout levels, of which we're talking about our July 2015 highs. I think that's completely fine. I mean, this thing can even test a little bit lower than that towards 1420, uh, but I believe I made this chart on a monthly, which you did not ask about, but I do think is relevant to say, yeah, I, 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 you know, I more or less like the monthly here. I don't really have a major problem with this long term. Um, but that is long term. But if you're talking about short term, is it losing steam? Yes, 100%. It is losing steam. I would be looking for another basing behavior somewhere around about 15 and a quarter. And then if you're if you're looking at like the short term, you know, quite a fair bit, then 16 and a half is kind of where we'd be looking for. It's like okay, we've reaccumulated now, and the breakout continues, and we can start to look towards those next targets, um, which is basically the highs of this run thus far. And then next major one's going to be like uh, just under 18 bucks. It looks like. I'd be, you know, you know, I'd be looking for that. But yeah, short term, very likely does pull back a little bit. Um, if this thing even tested down to the 10 simple on the weekly, that'd be okay too. But uh, I just want to, I just don't want to see any closures below there because this is, you know, a pretty, pretty powerful move. And I do think that this actually could be the time uh, based off the volume signature and based off momentum oscillators. It does suggest that we, th this, this one is relevant to say that we might actually have the macro breakout um in uh, in progress there all right cool uh chris Wiz says hey crown uh can i please have your thoughts on keep usd kraken exchange on the daily do we have to go to kraken for <laughs> all 
Uh, I imagine there's probably going to be more price action history on uh, Binance, but we will go to Kraken. Yeah, there's nothing here. Well, I guess it's monthly, so maybe maybe not so bad. Shit! It's shit! It's bad! Uh, I'd be looking for this one to come down to 33.7. Very bad. Uh, daily daily TSI turning down. Daily RSI rejection. Bullish control zone. Weekly is a rejection on new on another lower high. Looks bad, tastes bad, smells bad. We got a shitcoin chart, my friend. Uh, this one very likely even goes for the full retrace long term, but uh, short term, yeah, I'd be looking for this one to pop down to like 33 and a half, 33, yeah, 33 and a half to 34 cent, and then probably try for an anemic balance and then continuation long term. I mean, this, this is bad, not good. Uh, very not good. Very ungood, actually, sir. Um, <laughs> uh, Chris says, hey, Cran, can you take a look at Link USD? Sure, man. Um, Link is the one that really has me. Uh, Man, I just want to see Link do well because, uh, well, I'm just I'm just used to it seeing doing do, uh, to seeing it doing well. Well, what do we have here? We have another we have another lower high. We have another downtrend. Again, I, I do like that. I mean, long term, this chart does deserve its respect. But goddamn, um, goddamn, is that your complacency complacency bounce right there? I don't know. I can't speak, so perhaps it's not. If you can't say it, it's not true. <laughs> um, you know, you, you got you got a nice weekly uh, weekly zone right around about sixteen and a half bucks. You know, that that's kind of like your obvious bounce area. But what is your direct question? You're looking. Oh, you did not give a time frame, so I'm not exactly sure where to go with this one. Again, it's going to do whatever Bitcoin does. It's not, it doesn't take a uh, it doesn't take a a professional to, to tell you that this is a downturn right here. I'm not telling you that anything that you don't already know. Um, nothing nothing bullish to say about this one as far as the higher term time frames goes. As long as it's below, especially uh, below about 23 and a half. But even on a daily, where would my sort of precipice be? Uh, okay, so here's our last daily lower high at 25 bucks. I'd say a closure above there. We can start to talk about you know a bit of a recovery or just a wick higher than the tw uh, 15th of June, which is 26 and 47. Um, but until that happens, man, you know, if, if Bitcoin shows any weakness here and breaks below, you're going to see this thing break down too. And, you know, next major levels to the downside are going to be, you know, somewhere down around here, actually. So I'll be looking towards somewhere, somewhere down around, uh, 14 bucks to, uh, just around, uh, yeah, just below 15 bucks. So between 14 and, and 14 85 or so, um, if that one does want to play out, but, uh, for right now, I think it's just better to watch Bitcoin short-term timeframes. Do we see a bit of a bouncy bounce in progress here? Um, I mean, this one looks weak, but to be fair, four hour TSI is turning up Four hour BBWP is extremely low, low volatility swing at the lows. Uh, if that expansion comes any, uh, you know, on any, any new lows on the four hour, which is below 1931, um, extremely likely you're going to see 17 and uh, 17 and a quarter, 1740, and then probably even continuation down to those next, uh, weekly targets. But that'd be, that'd be what I'm looking for right here. Again, I would uh, I would be medium term bullish if this thing can take out about 26, 26 bucks to the upside. Uh, let's see what the monthly looks like. I mean, monthly kind of is in a bouncy territory here too. But uh, look, if we take out last month's low, this is this is a reversal, and this thing will work its way back down to ten bucks uh, over the next few months. So I'd give it a chance first. I mean, this is still one of the better charts in cryptocurrency land, all things considered, on a monthly. But goddamn. <laughs> God damn, man. Uh, that is uh, that <laughs> that is pretty fucking dastardly, and things can turn around uh, very, very nastily there. But uh, watch Bitcoin for direction, man. Watch Bitcoin for direction. Any weakness in Bitcoin, that thing's gonna get smacked on the face, uh, unfortunately. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Pablo South says uh, AMC seems ready to crash. Four hour daily, please. All right, let's check it out. Let's check it out. So AMC over here, another one of these Mimi stocks. Is it ready to crash? No, I wouldn't say so. Uh, this one's actually getting reaccumulated at a high level. Um, now, while I do think it's inevitable that it will crash, yes, uh, it's similar to GameStop, right? And GameStop, you know, is taking a while here. And, and GameStop, I think, is, is, is in a lot better of a posture to crash. Um, I see a lot of very interesting theories going on with that as well. And, you know, while people like to play the fundamental uh, macro analysis game, I just don't see that as like a, I just barely, rarely, rarely ever see that shit work out. You know, it, sh it should be more or less obvious within the charts, and, and I think GameStop is rather obvious. This one is this one is a little more obvious to continue with the upside. In fact, in my opinion, uh, you do see reaccumulation at a high level. As long as this thing is above forty two seventy five, I play this one as very likely to move to the upside. We got an ascending triangle right here at a high level. Uh, I guess I already have it drawn in there, and we can make a uh, a measure move based off this, and it's probably like I don't know seventy bucks or whatever. 
uh actually it's more like uh oh it's more like 90 bucks so you know i i you know i said this on the initial big break to the upside that uh this one could trade up to 100 bucks i still think so i, I think it could definitely trade up to 100 bucks but um i look at this as your you know as your continuation of current rally short term does it come back down uh and test around here yes very likely test around like 52 bucks but um but I'd, I'd be looking for a bounce there first and foremost i do not get bearish on this one as long as it's riding this trend line right here and uh if it does break then yes i'd be looking for a retest of these lows probably bounce there at 42 bucks and then this one keels over but it would not be appropriate for me to say that just yet and looking at the daily i, I don't have a major issue with this one as it is uh for right now on the daily just short term down back down to about uh, 52 or so and then come back to it um let's see spencer smith says 10 or actually let's look at momentum also is here first uh you did say full hour um let's see four hour tsi still in the bull in the bullish uh zone four hour rsi is getting uh some phantom drafts of bearish divergence so yeah next move very likely is to the downside but yeah i, I yeah, I'd, 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 I'd hold off on getting like full on bearish on this one just yet. All right, Spencer Smith says, technical question, my gains from the run are all in a nice stable coin. Fucking nice. Hey, there you go. Uh, pile accumulating interest. My question is, so like you're doing the APY thing? That's actually pretty cool, man. I don't play that, but um, <laughs> it's fucking enticing, man. It looks too good to be true, but uh, some of my friends who are like very well, um, you know, uh, aware of that, they they say it's not and they actually have proof for it. I mean, one of my good friends, uh, Elio Trades, he uh, he's showing me like some some crazy stuff over there. I'm like, it's like i want to do it but i also don't want to do it you know <laughs> okay so anyways your your question is so my question is do i let that uh do i let that accumulate bitcoin or usdc interest to buy more on the low well that would be a question of whether you're bullish or bearish long term on this asset um i do think that granted what we spoke about from yesterday's video and uh in this morning's video downside is becoming more and more likely there are certainly a lot more things pointing towards downside continuation but it is not confirmed just yet so it is still wise to be a little bit more on the neutral side in my opinion here's what i would say um generally speaking for myself actually i am more or less uh I, i'm more or less happy to accumulate bitcoin but you have to understand that this is a personal question right the question basically comes down to like do you have uh, like are you liquid in us dollar cash or whatever fiat currency you live your current life in and um and if you need more of that then yes you go for more of that if you need more bitcoin i generally have like a long-term bullish bias on bitcoin and i'm talking about like years and years out so for myself that means that uh and i don't even really think about it this way but if i am being 100 direct uh for my trading accounts i haven't taken um i haven't taken any gains out of my trading account since 2018 actually since the bull trap of 2018 in fact what i've done with my trading accounts is i just let that bitcoin uh stay there and i just put it on a ledger and just don't even touch it i, I and i just continue to accumulate that because i do have a long 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 term bullish bias on bitcoin but that is you know five ten years out probably um and i just i don't even think about it that way so perhaps that's something to consider as well uh, I don't know how long term you are, but if you are looking to just accumulate the interest, I mean, probably USDC is probably the safer bet, uh, probably probably the safer bet like right now in the short and medium term. Um, so take that as you will, sir. Uh, Jack Essiman says, sir, can you please check out gold weekly month? Yes. OK, let's definitely see where gold what gold is doing today. Let's see. Is it the big hedge that everyone's talking about when the markets are on the precipice of potential massive downturn? It appears not. It appears that it is just the same shitcoin as everything else. All right, so we, we spoke about the breakdown last week, and I would be looking for a little bit of continuation on this one, generally speaking, towards 1735. Probably a bounce implied there. Am I bearish on the monthly here, though? I don't know if I'd say that. Let's see what the quarterly says. Quarterly is still kind of a bit of a basing point. Um, I don't have a major issue with this chart, actually. Uh, same thing with the buy yearly, especially if we close basically anywhere here or higher above 1780 uh, or so. Um, I'd say that this definitely keeps the bull's hopes alive long term uh, on gold. But short term, does it come down a little bit lower? Yeah, I do you think so? Do I think it bounces from there? Yes, I do think so as well. Uh, anywhere around 1730-ish region. And then we'll come back to it after that. But uh, yeah, pretty fucking nasty move last week, uh, all things considered. So there you go. Strong dollar is bad for the gold. Hey, no, Bitcoin's coming back down. Don't do it, Bitcoin. Don't do it. He's going to cough up the rally once again. And here we go. It looks like, is this going to happen on stream? Can we see the ra the massive red girthy dildo party happen right in front of our very eyes? Is this the time that Bear Jesus is going to come into the market and shish kebab all bullish Anguses who were definitely pe pe per perilously calling this accumulation? Is this the moment for Bear Jesus to run? rise and resurrect once again <laughs> look i'm just getting excited for a bit of movement right here okay <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's the rug pull moment we've all been waiting for. Get those rugs out. It's the fucking rug rugging rug 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 <laughs> How does that is that the word? It's the rugging sirs. <laughs> um <laughs> Go lucky says the bro, <laughs> or I think I think that thinks bros. I love shorting the dog crap. Sh fair enough, man. Been holding shorts since sixty nine cents. Oh man, on your non financial tip, it is. I, I really like your uh, look. I don't care about my financial advice. I'm more I'm more impressed by your your way of getting the fucking meme price on that on that uh, bullshit token or bullshit uh, crypto. Uh, sixty nine cent. Holy fucking moly, man. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. That is a beautiful position. Uh, well, 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 well traded, man well fucking executed cole evans says hey ground uh, what's up man can you take a look at cardano usd on binance and let us know how hard this big move on the 24 will hit when that uh within that time frame oh no it is red dildo time oh my god darth maul dildos everywhere this market's getting fucking shish kebab in front of our very face it's down to 33 400 33 100 holy fucking moly is this the moment is this the time can bitcoin bear jesus take over this market and send us to twenty thousand bucks for deliverance and in the meantime let's look at cardania uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> bitcoin police are coming inbound real fast right now <clears throat> uh, in the meantime before this death drop happens let's go look at cardania no the 21 and 55 are crossing as we're testing the downside of the range that is always bullish <laughs> Sarcasm. Um, yeah. Maybe another short-term bounce of a one, one, one and a quarter or so. Maybe another short-term bounce there. Uh, big target for Cardano on a break, though. And again, this implies a Bitcoin breakdown as well, which technically speaking, it is not. Uh, I want to see below about 31 or, or at least 32 on a closure. Uh, 110 is where I'd be looking for. You know, our, our same base going in from uh, March, April-ish region right here, and basically the 200 on the uh, daily. Uh, about 110 to 105 regions where we're we'll looking towards. <clears throat> and, I, and I would be looking for a bounce there, to be fair. Oh, no, 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 no. What was that one? What 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 was that alert right there? I just already went past it. Motherfucker. Oh, was that Ethereum? That was Ethereum. Uh-oh. It's time. It's time. It is time, sirs and zers. Is it time to put on the hard hats? Is it time to get absolutely fucking wrecked? Yeah, this one does go come down a bit. Bad, bad, bad. She's being a very bad girl. Being a very, very bad girl right now. All right, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let me just, uh, maybe I shouldn't be trading while I'm live because that is, that could be, that could end up very terribly, especially with the potential downside that we got going on right here. I was actually gonna, I was actually thinking of buying a wick there, but um, let's see. Where does Ethereum come down to before this one becomes a little bit playable? Ah, do we have another bounce of the 200? Maybe. That is uh, just below 1900, so fair enough. Nasty. Let's see. All right. Well, maybe we try some over there. Okay. All right. Let me get back on to the comments over here. M M M A Lombardi says, "Hola, crown. What's up, man? Uh, Como estas, sir, or señor, or señorita? Uh, some crystal ball fun here. Remember the China pump back in October 2019? I do remember that one very vividly. Actually, I was on an airplane during that time. In fact, uh, uh, pump on the 12 hour t uh, pump pump on the 12 hours almost identical to this recent consolidation." uh negative sentiment um uh eerily similar yes yes uh yeah i i do agree so basically what you're talking about is you know a potential break um oops wrong chart a potential break uh what's called or sorry let, let me just bring you back to that region right here it, it, it was this area right here so bitcoin was kind of consolidating within a nice rectangle breaks to the downside actually hits the move there and then immediately has a spring up um for a mega mega move and that's kind of what i was hoping would happen on that last failed bull trap but um I mean, that, that is a pretty nice move right there. Let's see, I'm just curious, did this actually hit the measure move to the downside first? Yes, it did, it did. And now was, and was the more conservative of the measure moves. So what would be the conservative measure, measure move on Bitcoin here? Uh, just out of curiosity, it would be between here and here. And that, I think that was to 26. Uh, let's see. No, that's actually uh, 29, uh, I think it's like 29 to 28. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty muted right there. Uh, it's on, you know, on a, on a very conservative estimate, about 29. On a very aggressive estimate, about 28. Yeah, about a $1,000 range right there. Yeah, possible. Definitely possible. Um, anyways, moving on. What else do we got? Uh, Wobble says, CLNE daily and weekly, please. I have call options for $12 July 18th. Am I fucked, sir? <laughs> Am I fucked, sir? E-L-N-E. Let's see what we got here. Clean Energies Fuel Corporation. M. 
Okay, so you had okay, so you bought you you bought the top, uh, twelve dollars. Uh, so you, you bought right here. You didn't you didn't buy the top, but you bought the top of uh, of of last Friday. Okay, so when are these expiring again? These are expiring July eighteenth, so that's a few weeks away. I mean, so these are going to become all premium within the next couple of weeks. Um, you're looking at uh, okay, so you got twelve uh, you got twelve dollar call options right here. Are you fucked? I wouldn't necessarily say that you're fucked, but within that time frame, you probably are. Eh. Weekly, not bad. Not great either. Monthly's fine. Look, the, the problem with this thing is that I actually would have generally good things to say about it. And even on the four hour, yeah, I do think this is a general healthy consolidation right here. And I'd kind of play it to the upside as long as it's um as long as it's kind of riding this trend line here, which you know could could imply another test down to like eleven bucks or so. Uh actually would be looking for this one to pop back up towards 13 and a half, 14 bucks overall. Um, the problem with this thing is though, is that is does that happen within your time frame? Because this is an obvious consolidation after the short-term reversal. I don't know. Um, I, I have to say a healthy amount of I don't know in this situation uh, because I do not have a strong opinion on that. My strong opinion is on you know general continuation to the upside. In fact, this one's okay, uh, all things considered. Yeah, uh, yeah, this, this this one is okay, all things considered. Um, but does it happen within that time frame? I do not know, man. Uh, that that is a question that I cannot answer uh, with any degree of um, of helpfulness, in my opinion. So uh, I, I do I would be looking for a range here. I don't think it's breaking out right now. Um, I don't think it's breaking up right now. I think it will test down to, you know, 11 or, or maybe even 10 and a half. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that this one will give another try to the upside uh, past that $12 entry somewhere around like 14 bucks. But I don't know how much premium you paid for that. Maybe that's just all premium at that, at that price anyways. Because remember, on expiration, these are only going to be worth parity ever, ever, ever. Like a hard and set rule. I mean, par parity or zero. <laughs> parity or fucking zero. Anyways, go back to Bitcoin over here. Bitcoin getting absolutely fucking shrecked. It is the time, my friends. It is the time. Put your hands together for goddamn Bear Jesus. Bear Jesus is hot with in this market right now and he has stepped in and he has made himself known and he has summoned the shitcoin please he summoned the sirens and he summoned the fuck all around the whole goddamn market and i actually think that we might be seeing this one happen in real time right now we did say at the beginning of the stream bitcoin whether you're bullish or bearish just like last week that test up to forty-one thousand. in this case i would be looking for a test down to about thirty-one thousand bucks so that's kind of what I'm waiting for right now. Do we get a bounce there? I do think so. The question is, how do we end this five day? If we end it back above 35 or especially 36, I do think that keeps the Bulas hopes alive. That will be around the end of this week, Thursday or Friday, I believe. And if not, oh, baby, get ready. Get ready, because if you like Bitcoin at 30,000 bucks, you're going to love it at fucking 20 or 19. All right, cool. Um, let's see what else we have. Spread your spread. <laughs> it's, it's time to get those cheeks spreaded, my friends. Hold on. Okay, let me just make sure that I didn't miss anything else too much. Okay, yeah, because else is not in the uh, in the driver's seat right now. So let me pull up the chats over here, and we can get down to the very, very bottom of them very quickly. Ah, shit, shit. It is. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, got it. Got it right in over here. All right. Um, uh, the Raptor is upon us. Raptor Jesus is upon us, isn't he? Uh, here we go. All right, coming down. I want to see that thirty-one tick. Maybe I play a bounce there. Maybe I don't play a bounce there. We shall see. We shall see. Uh, now, what is okay? Let me let me go down to the very low term time frames. In, th in these cases right here, I do want to put an alert somewhere down around there uh, first before we go into the lower term time frames. Then we can go down to like a five minute. But I'll do one right. Let's do a little bit above there. This one's going to be a warning alert in this case. Let's go down to a five minute right now. Let's see where we're at. It is a breakdown, sirs. It is an absolute fucking shattering of price action, sirs. It is an. <laughs> it is not looking good, sirs. Oh dear lord. Oh dear lord. Fam says, I'm not gay. I am gay myself, actually. Uh, and it's Pride Month, so I'm proud to be. Anyways, uh, I think we're going to 24 to 25,000, says, uh, says Roshi. Perhaps, yes. Alert derp. <laughs> we need an alert derp. Hey, what's up, Nimbo? Bitcoin shorts closing as price is dumping, too. Um, again, I don't really... Uh, I, you know, I understand this is kind of like the new meme within this market, but I don't think that this matters that much. What, uh, what Nimbo is referencing right here is the Bitfinex shorts. Again, Bitfinex shorts, um, you know, an exchange that is not really that relevant. But yeah, we've seen all these shorts pretty much just come off the books. Uh, are these positions being claimed or not? That's a real question. What is their other positions on the exchanges? What are their other positions um, as far as like, you know, derivatives go? We don't know. It's very difficult to make something off just that information. But uh, to be fair, I mean, to just call a spade a spade. Yeah, I, I mean, they are getting shoved off the cliff right there. They are, they, they, uh, they are presumably taking profits on this. So do they take profit at the bottom side of the range and then maybe prepare for a bounce? Possible, yeah. Yes, definitely possible. Um, but uh, I want to see it first. And did we get down to 32 on price action just yet? Uh, 32.5, close. We're basing off the 377 right now. Uh, again, it's the five day 89 that I'm looking at right here. I want to see a test down around here before I look for any sort of really meaningful bounce uh, potentially. 
potentially speaking. Uh, let's see, I think I just missed a, another comment. Uh, where did that one come in? Phil Moore says, I heard that all you need is 28, uh, not 0.28 Bitcoin to be rich. It looks like we'll all be rich soon enough. Uh, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that, that reeks as like the same sort of YouTube bullshit that I see sometimes where it's like, <sighs> if you own not 0.1% Bitcoin or not 0.1 Bitcoin, you are already a millionaire. Few understand. It's like, what the fuck? Um, what? Or, you know, if, if you own, if you own one Bitcoin, it'll be worth like 1 billion in just a few years. It's like, what the fuck? Like how you, you can't know that you can't say that. You can't say that like with any with any degree of certainty um and the problem is when you say it's shit like that and and you're not saying that I'm, I'm not i'm not english towards you i'm just uh I'm, I'm just kind of speaking you know out of turn here essentially um but uh but the problem with saying something like that is like look like people are going to believe that for one <laughs> like you know it's, it's appealing it's appealing to the emotional thing it's like oh fuck man i want to be a millionaire and that actually seems attainable right there um you know realistically man uh there's no way to fucking know that and, and there's also and more importantly when you're talking about price action that far out like there are so many degrees of uncertainty that can that can come about there's so many variables there's so many uh just you know random events that could happen that could completely throw that off the wayside um even if your model is like you know as fucking accurate as possible there's always gonna be a not point not 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 one percent chance that it's just not going to be fucking correct and if it's not then and you say something like that and you know people are taking your advice on that it's like okay well are you responsible in a way? Well, obviously people are responsible for their own decisions. Yes, no doubt about that. I'm a strong believer in that. Um, but, you know, it's like, how can you say something like that without further proof? Um, you know, it, it, even just a very odd chance that that happens. Anyways, I do have some to, to come back to, though. Uh, yesterday, or maybe the day prior to that, uh, I spoke about the Michael Saylor clip where he was like saying, you know, you need to sell everything. You need to fucking take a mortgage out on your mortgage, long your fucking longs, and, and put it all into Bitcoin. Uh, someone educated me on that. I believe it was Texas Hold'em T, I, I believe his name is. And he educated me on that. And that is actually not the full scenario of what Michael Saylor said. So I, I retract that statement. Um, and I apologize for that statement too, because he was basically asked a very specific scenario as to like what you do in in X Y Z situation. It was like a very hypothetical question. It was not uh, it was not what it was prepared to be at all. In fact, um, so uh, so I, I can put my faith back in Michael Saylor. He's not fucking crazy or anything like that. Uh, he he knew he knew what he was saying, but it was a very specific situation, and the context was left out of that clip, unfortunately. Um, so I do think it's it's important to kind of come back and and re-express those thoughts. All right, cool. Um, 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 let's see. If you just stayed up in USD since December, you're actually up. Yeah, true. True. True, true, true. I mean, again, sometimes ca cash is a position and sometimes cash is the best position, actually, especially if you don't want to trade on leverage and, you don't, and you're not comfortable with shorting, then, you know, that is your next best option. So, yeah, 100%, man. And that's something to always focus on. I'm sure people are going to call this a head and shoulders as well. I mean, for right now, it does work out as a, out as a head and shoulders. But if this drags on any longer, then no, it will not. But uh, that's why I do say if you are going to be bearish, this week probably is the week of breakdown. Um, if that's going to happen. And technically speaking, could we make a measure move on this? We could. We could, and that's going to be pointed. Oh dear lord, nine thousand bucks. Um, let's just uh, ignore that. That didn't happen, and we can still be bullish, right? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm in Ethereum at twenty five ninety average. Should I panic? Um, I don't know. What was your plan? When when did you plan to get out of your uh, failed position, sir? Um, should you panic? I, I don't know. I don't know what you should do. I, I have no idea what you planned on when you got in that position to begin with. Were you planning on holding it for the next 10 years? Maybe not. Then may, you know, may, 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 maybe you're fine with sitting through like a half a year to a year of, uh, you know, of, of, of sideways and down below your price action. Maybe you're an active trader, at which point I'd say you already fucked up. Um, so what's the best thing to do after you fucked up? Do some, do a non fuck up. You know, what's the best thing to do after, uh, after you do something wrong, do something right. Right. I mean, people always, I fucking hate this mentality that people sometimes espouse where it's like, I, I missed my exit and now I'm stuck in a position. It's like, you're never stuck. You're never fucking stuck. You can always make a decision and making no decision is a decision. And if you, and if you decide to do that, whether passively or, or, or non-passively, you pay the price either which way. So I can only try to help you to help lead you towards your own answer, but I can't answer that question for you, especially just based off of like a one sentence statement. There's no way to me, for me to fucking know or no way for me to uh, have any idea what you were trying to do without at the outset. What I'd say though, in the future, and this is obviously not what you want to hear right now and, and, and fair enough, I can understand that. It's not like right to, you know, throw salt in the wound, but in the future, it would be very wise, or at least it'd be a lot better of a dec uh, decision to, you know, plot out your fucking trades. And when I say plot out your trades, 
make sure you know where your entry whenever you have an entry you simultaneously need to know exactly where you want to exit what's going to tell you that uh you know that you need to exit there and then obviously your risk management on the other side these need to be just defined before you even enter the fucking trade man and see and i would imagine based off that uh, statement you probably do not do that so in a more uh tough love way i'd say look man if you want to continue in this game if you uh, assuming that you are trading or or even investing you need to have a fucking plan, man. If you have no plan, I can assure you that over a long enough time period, it will not go well for you as it does not go for basically anyone who, who you know, has no plan. Um, again, you know, just saying that uh, just straight up. So hopefully that is, again, in some way helpful uh, as we do watch the the downturn of this market, baby. Oh, my Lord. That is one massive girthy rail dildo. One hourly coming down about 2,000 bucks thus far from top to bottom. And this is not looking good into the, uh, well, I guess four-hour closure still about an hour uh, about an hour away. But, uh, ah, we got new lows. That's nice. That's real good. That's real healthy. Uh, CME. Wow, that's a really good looking price action right there. Uh, just a retest of our breakout, bro. Until you get dumped the fuck on. <laughs> Uh, bots for the win says, uh, can we go back to 11.5, uh, retest old week uh, resistance? Um, are you talking about on, on Bitcoin? Uh, back to 11,500? I mean, that would be your last make macro breakout, right? That's essentially where we got macro bullish on this price section right here, uh, right around 11.5 to 12,000 bucks. And in hindsight, that was the right call. Um, could we go all the, all the way back there? Uh, I mean, there has been situations in the past where we've retested uh, the macro breakout. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that in 2017 right here. Um, yeah, it's possible. It's possible, yes. I mean, that is essentially where Bitcoin did base off and find its lows in 2014 uh, down around here. It's possible, yes. What is that like the main thing that I'm looking for? No, not really. Not really. I, I, I think it'd be pretty fucking far out. Um, even the 200 simple on the weekly is above 11,500 at this point. And I, I do think like max, 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 max pain would be the 200 simple. To be fair, you know, while Bitcoin has technically never broken the 200 simple on the weekly, uh, it always, it, you know, there's always a possibility that it can. I mean, there, there is a first time for everything, right? But, you know, historically speaking, I, I'd say it's quite unlikely. I, I'd be pretty surprised to see Bitcoin below like 19,000 bucks. But hey, that's, you know, is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? That's the real question. And I'd say it's not like my first target, for example, on a break to the downside. No, um, it's, it's, it's certainly not my first target to the downside. All right, let's see. Breaking down. Uh, Ethereum's now officially below 2,000. Is this the moment? Is this the moment that we are waiting for? I think it might just be. Let's see. Weekly is in full meltdown mode. I mean, the weekly has all, just all air. <laughs> all air to like 15, which is not fucking good. Bitcoin on this in the same case. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still looking at the five day rate. I, I do think that we will get a bounce around there. Yes. Uh, Super Google says uh, Ethereum Bitcoin daily, please, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, uh, well, we did look at this one earlier, but I'm curious to see if it's breaking down with Bitcoin price action. No, I, I, I think it's putting in a bit of a base here, actually. See what the four hour looks like. Um, well, here's the question. I mean, if, if Bitcoin really does break down here, this thing will break down as well. But I do see some bottoming signs. Uh, it's kind of kind of struggling to break below this structure right here. That would be about six million Satoshis even. So I'd kind of stick with that in, until proven otherwise. You know, we do see multiple drives of Phantom Div right here. The last one was for our TSI. It's a little bit more on the bear side daily. Eh, backfill and probably bounce. I, I I don't think it's um. I mean the two day looks like shit. Jesus Christ, three day. Eh, not the best either. Yeah, I'm a little bit stumped on this one actually. Um, if you just want to take another leg down, I would be looking at five spots, five spot seven million satoshis, five spot seven, and that would be uh, confirmed with basically just a. I don't know what i say a wick lower in this case eh, i want to see a closure below this level it's 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 pretty tight right there it's just e easier to watch price action over here once again i think we're getting very very close all right um sam says appreciate your course and streams uh helped my plan i'm glad to hear that that was just a nice positive message very glad to hear that man uh oh also uh still waiting for the chivalry 2 battle cry to rally bitcoin back up i don't think i don't think uh it's going to take more than a battle cry to get that one back up man how did how does it even go it sounds like a lexington steel cry is what it sounds like here you go no, that's not it. That's... God damn it, that's not... Motherfucker, that's not it, sir. That's not it. Wait, where... Where have I put these? Wait, is this it? Oh! oh God!
Oh. Just another day at Crown's Crypto Cave, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's get fucking dumped on boyos and girlos and all other genders that might be present in this chat right now. We are all the same. We are all getting shish kebab by the red dildo of death. Bitcoin bear Jesus has risen and he has forsaken all of your bullish posts. All of your bullish posts are being kept in a vault in heaven, in bull Jesus heaven. And now they are destroyed. And bear Jesus is rising as the true leader, the true ruler of the Bitcoin fucking world. Glad to be here with you fellers today. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to sleep here. You might be in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, boss for the win says, press alt I, sir. We are going to the moon. That's right. It's all good, fellas. It's all good. We are bullish as fuck. Oh, baby. Brendan McBride says, GU on the daily and weekly, please. Sure. Is this a gold miner? Uh, this? Are you talking about um, Forex? Okay. I think, I think you are. I think you probably are. Maybe let's not invert the chart. I think it's actually this one. <laughs> there we go. That looks right. Um, I'd be looking for bounces relatively soon, somewhere down around about 137. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty fucking close there. But uh, is the, you know, does that bounce get sold into you? I think so. Yes. Um, you know, how high can it bounce first? Maybe like 139. Uh, but I do not like the macro lower highs in progress here. That is not good, sir. That is not good. Yeah, and completely failing the whole rally is usually not a good sign. So short term bouncy bounce. Long term, I do think that this one will end up coming down to about 136 on the monthly. Uh, but what time frame did you ask for? What time frame did you ask for? Yeah, you're looking for a uh, pound US dollar. Yeah, okay. You're, you're talking about pound US dollar. I mean, I, th I believe this one. Yeah, this, this is a, this is a futures um, or yeah, it, it is futures. You can look at some, um, it's going to be the same chart realistically with just slightly different numbers here. Yeah, sa same thing on this chart. Did we take out the last low? Yes, we did. So we have a bearish engulfing monthly in progress, sir. Not good. So again, short term bounce. Uh, this thing can bounce up to maybe even 139. But ultimately, I do think that you will find your way down to about 135 and a half, 136 region and maybe try for maybe try for a bounce there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, OK, did we get everything else? <laughs> No funny. Well, fair enough, man. I didn't claim to be funny, nor am I trying to be funny. What's up, Mr. Mekin? Mekin, what's your name in the Discord, by the way? Have you ever looked at USDT perp on FTX during uh, dumps and pumps as an indicator of strength? Um, no, I haven't, but I, I do understand that there is a bit of a uh, bit of a relationship there. We can look at it. USD perp. USDT perp. That is. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got all sorts of crazy things going on right here. Uh, that is a. Let's go to a daily. I mean, it, it is weakening. It is kind of uh, downtrending a little bit there. But I mean, these are very minute uh, moves, obviously. I mean, we we're talking about like a not point, not, not, not one move, right? So it's kind of hard to make much out of. But uh, I do see that there is a that there is definitely a relationship here. Um, but I haven't I haven't put too much uh, work into it myself. So I'd have to I'd have to spend some more time actually like looking at this. But um, I'd imagine that it probably doesn't veer too far from that dollar pegging, or at least hope not. Hopefully not. Great Fox says, when you're a bear, you want to strangle yourself daily, but on a specific day of the, out of the month, you're going to get uh, real, really happy. True. Maybe, maybe true. I mean, you know, to be fair, I mean, bears have been kind of uh, in hibernation for the last, what, you know, almost a year going back to October 2020. Um, I mean, realistically, it's been straight up since uh, March 2020, actually. So, you know, looking at this right now, um, you know, bear, bears are kind of getting their first uh, their first party in a long time. I mean, 50 percent down and then looking like uh, might even get a little bit more. What's up? Ye loves pizza. Uh, delirious crown. Man, please look up short term AMP USD. Okay, AMP USD. All right, let's see what this one's got. AMP USD on, hmm, I guess Bittrex. 
Uh, pretty good. Uh, very good. But you're talking about short term. Uh, the weekly is strong as fuck, man. This is a very good chart. Very good chart. Long term. Uh, short term, a uh, little bit of a range going on sideways. Uh, perhaps another. Well, I guess it looks like we just kind of tested the downside of the range lows here. Kind of coming in with this last. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Coming in with this last lower high, this local low right here. You know, does it test into your into your again? Maybe. But uh, I do actually like this one, and I'd actually be looking for another continuation drive uh, with any sort of a four hour closure above about nine spot three to the upside. Uh, weekly is good. Uh, weekly says more upside long term. Monthly same thing. Uh, very good charts. Very good charts. Probably the best chart we've seen today actually very very good chart um but uh, i'd be i'd be very curious to see what it does if bitcoin actually does drop out the bottom side here uh bots for the win says if we break 31k do you see a three-year bear market um no i i uh, it's not that i don't see that or, or that i do see that my crystal ball is unclear and i don't really have a strong opinion on that um here's what i would say the general gist of market cycles is is that the faster you go up the faster you come down and the faster the cycle will play out and this one thus far has been technically speaking the fastest cycle right uh the last cycle for example was 2015 all the way to 2018 and that's like two years of sustained upside essentially uh, same thing over here. You can look at this as one me mega cycle, essentially, or no, or so sorry, not even that, but you can see this one right here, kind of similar to what we to what we did, right? Where Bitcoin gets its first major move to the upside, it's so fucking fast, so aggressive, so violent, comes down, puts in a base for about six months, and then continuation for you know another splurt, and then that's when that leads into a more long term. And you can really just look at these as like two. Uh, two major, uh, you know, it's, it's it's not necessarily like two separate cycles. It's actually like the same cycle, but uh, but it gets resolved over here. And then same thing over here. Bitcoin spends like three years going to the upside, two three years going to the upside. It spends about two three years going sideways and down. Right. Well, this one's only spent about um, you know about uh, you know October twenty twenty to where we're at right now. So a little bit under a year, I suppose, uh, without doing any stupid monthly math, but. Um, you know, if, if we are going to play like an actual downside move, sustained downside move, I'd imagine it's probably going to be a lot more, you know, a lot, a lot faster than what you would expect, uh, generally speaking. But, you know, do I do I uh, what you know, would I stand by that general statement? Yeah, I'd, I'd stand by that statement, but I wouldn't necessarily just blindly say, um, yeah, it's definitely definitely not going to be a three year downside move. Um, you know, I, I, I do think the most healthy thing for this market after this sort of price action right here for the last thing, uh, for, sorry, for the last year, all things considered, is sideways, man. Si 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 sideways is probably the best thing for Bulas uh, still. All right, cool. Smash the likes for Sir Lexington. <laughs> do we have any people liking this video? Oh my God, no, we do not. No one likes this video. That's okay, though. You don't have to like this video if you don't want to like this video. <clears throat> <laughs> the person who said uh, no funny it has unliked the video. Well, thank you for letting me know, sir. I appreciate that, and I will process your refunds later. Um, <laughs> it's like, what do you say to that? Uh, 1,000? Um, support at 1,000? I mean, there is support at 1,000, but uh, I think there's a few bounces along the way before that. I think that there's a few bounces along the way. Let's see, where are we on the monthly scale here, too? Uh, monthly, we still haven't taken out the last monthly low, but we do see the 21s coming in right around where? About 26,000 bucks. So, you know, in a, uh, you know, it, you know, in a breakdown this week, I would be looking for a big bounce around there, yes. Um, what's up, Solverine? Uh, morning, Playboy. <laughs> Mind checking uh, DT, Dyna, Dynatrace, uh, Daily Weekly. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, man, bank is trading me better, actually. Uh, DT, symbol DT. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, wow. Very good chart. Wow. Very good chart. Uh, this, this is phenomenal. It's actually freshly breaking out right here. I don't know what this thing is. Um, I don't know what this thing does, but uh, you don't need me to tell you that this one's really, really good. Uh, weekly TSI turning up freshly on new all-time highs. Weekly RSI just getting into the bullish control zone after playing a hidden bullish divergence on new all-time highs. Very fucking good. Very fucking strong. This is, uh, this is probably the best chart we've seen of today. Very, very impressive, actually. Even the four hours freshly breaking out all time frames bullish. I'd be looking for new all-time highs on this one. I suppose we could come up with a bit of a short-term target, or maybe not short-term, but we come up with a bit of a weekly target. Uh, let's see. Let's get our, our let's get our retracements here and see what the the magical fibs show us. Uh, short-term breakout targets would be about uh, fifty-eight to fifty-nine bucks, and then long-term would be seventy, yeah, six, uh, sixty-five to, to seventy bucks. Um, looks pretty good, man. But uh, here's the problem with something like this: is like, what you know, is it is it going to be strong enough to go contra to traditional markets? Of which I imagine they're probably playing out a bit of a downside move right there. No, we are getting the bounce that we spoke about first. Which, yeah, fair enough. Maybe this goes for a higher low. Possible. If it goes for a higher low, will we have hidden bullish divergence? No, no bullish divergence allowed, sir. None of it. But uh, yeah, I, I do think that we bounce here. So maybe that one has, helps it out. 
In fact, spot doesn't look as bad when you look at it like this, but uh, you know, at the very least, again, it's like whether you're bullish or bearish, do I think that we bounce first? Yes. Can we bounce up all the way to the 10 simple here at 4170, 4180? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, but I do express reservation more long term on this one, actually. Not great. <clears throat> Um, okay, okay. Is it possible uh, this is a mid-cycle correction and us bouncing off of uh, 22,000 bucks? Yeah, I, I mean, of course it's possible, yes. Uh, basically what you'd kind of be relating this to, this price section to, would be your 2013, 2014 double bubble, right? You're looking at something like this. Yeah, possible, definitely possible. Uh, Bitcoin did inevitably, uh, well, based off of the 55 in this case, it's not necessarily doing the same thing right here, to be fair. Or at least if it does break down further, that will obviously not be the same thing. But, um, you know, things, things uh, do change over time, obviously. Uh, my point is, is that is that a possibility? Yes, absolutely, it is a possibility. Um, that would, that is certainly not, uh, that 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 situation has certainly not been like thrown by the wayside just yet. I do still think that, um, you know, depending upon how this next five day goes, we actually could see a bit of a fake out. But uh, that's like the last hopium for Bitcoin, realistically. I mean, if the last hopium fails, you know, 20, 25 to twenty six, uh, next sort of bouncy territory, and then uh, low low twenty thousand dollar territory. I don't really see much at uh, twenty two thousand bucks. Like I said, there will be bounces along the way. Um, if we look at the daily right here, it should be rather obvious. You know, here, here you go, about 20, uh, 24, 25. A little bit of interest right here at about 28. Um, and then obviously uh, your 18 and a half to $19,000 territory is like the big, 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 big base. So uh, those are the major areas I'd be looking for for potentially a daily bounce. Okay. Hey, what's up, Derek M? Oh, my fucking man. Oh, my fucking man. <laughs> yes, we're going to need some losing this guy with diamonds after looking at this price action for too long, baby. Oh, no, we just got the hourly close and it's on new. It's well, it's not necessarily on new lows, but new lows from the weekend uh, price action. We have continuation motherfucker. Uh, let's look at uh, CME right here. Do we see backwardation now? We do. We do. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, wow. Okay, that's uh, always very bullish to just completely cough up your whole rally. Down below the 200 simple. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, man. And I think CME makes this a lot more obvious as well. Now, keep in mind, there is a bit of a difference in, um, you know, price action from there. Let me just use the rays in this case. They're easy to watch. And the over here, fuck off. We don't even, don't even need that one for a long time anymore. Uh, but yeah, 377, also in line with these wicks right here. 29, or sorry, 28, 28, 27. Below there, you got CME gap. Also the, oh, did I do it on this chart or this chart? I did it on this chart. There we go. All right, here it is. Here she is. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'd, I'd have areas of interest along all of these major areas right here uh, for like daily bounces. And I forgot one right here. That would be right around there. That would be about uh, 28.5 to 28 uh, even. Yeah, about 28.5. Man, that really does change around a lot. Log scale is deceptive, sirs and zers. Very deceptive. Let's go into the low term time frames, like a five minute. What we got going on right here? Is are we gonna get a bounce? Is it a five minute bounce? Can we bounce up all the way to thirty three thousand bucks? Maybe, maybe, maybe. What's up? What's up, caretaker? <laughs> so what you're saying is up only. That's right. That's right. You just turn your computer uh, monitor upside down, and you too can have any price action that you certainly want. Um, was that your fire alarm? I thought I'm getting bombed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the Russians are still not bombing us just yet. Uh, the Russians are uh, still same subdued, but um, yeah, Bear Jesus is is uh, is making his presence known for sure. Right Coast Crypto says, Crown, given the amount of institutional money that has come into the cycle is uh, that the amount of institutional money that has come into in this cycle is is really different from anything we've had. Right, this feels like manipulation and not a natural cycle. It's all manipulation, sir. It's manipulation to the upside and to the downside. You, we are all market manipulators by definition. So this is the wrong way to be thinking about things. You know, people always say this market's being manipulated by those mean evil bankers. Per first off, it's not fucking bankers. It's probably uh, it's probably like some quant firm that you've never heard of, or maybe three hours capital. If that, you know, super cycle me, <laughs> super cycle me, bitch. Um, but uh, uh, sorry, where, where was I going with that? Um, you know, people have always said that, man. People said the same thing in 2017, right? It's like, this time is different. It's like, no, it's not. It's, it's not fucking different, man. Look, uh, if you're going to say something like that, if, if look, if, if you're going to say something like that and run with an assumption like that, and I'm not saying this directly towards you, but just in general, because I know that this is like a meme within this market uh, where people are saying, isn't this time different because we have institutional players in, in the market? No, it's, it's not at all. And I think that this is rather obvious here. Look, if... If, if that meant anything, do you think we'd play at a fucking 56% downside move basically over the course of two days? Or, well, I mean, it's more basically like two weeks. 
no, it, that that's already a non-topic conversation. That that's that that is ridiculous, um, in my opinion, absolutely fucking ridiculous, in leading the noobs to to slaughter by saying that sort of things because you just don't fucking know. You 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 can't fucking know that. And more importantly, institutions are going to trade in the same way. You know, well, not in the same way as you, but they're going to trade, right? So why why how does that work out? Do they just buy? No, they don't just fucking buy. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, I I I, I just do not understand where this is coming from. Uh, I know it's not coming from you i know it's coming from like several other uh influencers and whatnot who just you know look I I'm, I'm happy to do the hopium drums as well uh but it needs to be balanced out with more reasonable analysis or at least more pertinent analysis on the other side and that's just not that is just it's not even reasonable it's not that's my problem with it. it's not even fucking reasonable so that's why i kind of push back a lot on statements like that it's, it's just not fucking like how do you how do you resolve that statement with the current price action you can't it's like guys we're not gonna be going down like any crazy anymore because we have institutions now okay well we just went down 55 fucking percent in two weeks so what am i waiting what am i it's, it's, it's just like okay instead of 70 percent, we're going down 50 it's like well okay that's that's a fucking shitty consolation prize um so fair enough uh, okay, Hoji42 says, Hey Crown, I've been paying a lot of attention to session volume profiles recently. How much weight do you place on the naked POC, especially with Bitcoin? Um, it's relevant, yes. Uh, it, it works very, very well when you actually when you actually have structure going on, and we do. Um, and while I'm not using session, I'm using uh, visible range. Um, you know, here's what you'd be looking at, right? You'd be looking at this right here. Obviously, once we failed below about 37,000 bucks, that's that was kind of our line in the sand on this channel, right? Said, hey, below 37,000 bucks, or is even a little bit above there at around 38 on the four hour 200 simple at the time. Uh, this is no longer, uh, you know, an immediate bullish hopium case. This is this is very likely coming back down to range. And that's exactly what we've got. Now, here's the thing if you're looking at it daily, I mean, <laughs> here you can start to see that, you know, look, if Bitcoin wants to break down below these regions,